afternoon from the Boston Garden, the Detroit Red Wing Hockey Club brings you the game between the Boston Bruins and the Detroit Red Wings. Detroit Red Wing Hockey is brought to you by your AMC and Jeep dealers, home of the AMC Concord Pacer Spirit and Jeep vehicles, and by Labatt's, for beer at its finest, call for Labatt's, and by Bank of the Commonwealth, trying hardest to help, and by Little Caesars, a winner any way you slice it. And so we say hi again to you from the Boston Gardens, the Detroit Red Wings, and the Boston Bruins. Bruce Martin along with Sid Abel, and in just a moment or two, these teams will be getting things going on a Saturday afternoon. Sid, it wasn't too long ago we used to dread uh, the, the games away from home because the Wings were having all sorts of problems, and we repeated 23 times. They went out 23 times, they came back without a victory. And now in the last nine games, they've lost only two away from home. They've won six and tied another, and they just have done quite a turnaround. They've been a lot of fun for the last three weeks or so. Bobby Crom has them playing like they hadn't played all season long. They're getting good goaltending. Their defense is playing well, and they're scoring goals, especially the line of Netabansky, McCourt, and Lebransky. Uh, uh, Netabansky, McCourt, and Lebratton have been just terrific. And then another uh, little guy who has played pretty terrific hockey in recent games, too, is named Jimmy Rutherford. He has uh, played the last 10 games, and he played one prior to that and won it. And so over his last 11 games, Jim Rutherford uh, shows only two losses, a couple of ties, and another seven victories. So he has helped to turn things around. Well, Bruce, in the National League, you don't win hockey games unless you have goaltending. And goaltending is what Jimmy Rutherford has given the Red Wings right now. And so they're a winner because you've got to have a goaltender that will make big saves for you. Jimmy Rutherford has come up with just fantastic saves to keep the club in the game. And then they've scored the goals to go on and win. Well, Sid, another of the reasons, perhaps, is uh, the turnaround and a little more discipline shown could uh, stem from a fellow named Bobby Crom, who has started to smile a little bit in uh, the last couple of weeks. And uh, with that in mind, we've invited Bobby to join you just prior to the start of this hockey game. So we'll be back with a live interview between Coach Bobby Crom and Sid Abel after we pause now for this. Bruce Martin mentioned the fact that the last few weeks now the Wings are winning and playing well and you're smiling. Well, well, How do you account for them playing so well the last uh, 10 games or so? Well, Sid, I think it was uh, three weeks, a month ago, we felt that we owed it to our public. You know, they've been selling out our building here in Detroit and uh, we, were, we felt badly about the year and we felt that we had to go out there and just play each game at a time and, and hopefully finish on a winning note and this is what we're doing and hopefully the remainder nine games that we have remaining that uh, we can win our share of games and I think if the club continues to play disciplined hockey and we get the goaltending that we have received from Jimmy Rutherford, uh, I think we can do well. Bob, I want to talk about the goaltending. Jimmy Rutherford has played well. Rogie Vachon we know is a great goaltender, but the team just didn't seem to be able to win with uh, Rogie. Jimmy goes back in, and you said that Jimmy would stay in as long as he played well, and he has certainly done that for you. Right, he has. Uh, we've had our problems right from our game number one, Sid, and it just seemed that one problem compounded another problem, and we just couldn't get uh, untracked in the first half of the year with Rogie or Jimmy, and uh, so we couldn't put anything together. We had other players that were not playing as well as they should. Right now, we're getting good goaltending. The players that played well last year, are, our key players, are playing very well, and much more disciplined, and consequently, we're winning hockey games, and it doesn't matter against who. Bob, and another thing, injuries are always going to crop up in the National Hockey League, and you've had your share with the Red Wings, but yet it took an injury to Errol Thompson that made you juggle your lines, and you come up with possibly the hottest line in hockey now with McCourt, LeBratton, and Nedimensky. Well, they're all uh, super players. Danny LeBratton started off very strong for us and tapered off for about two months, but he was playing on the right side a lot of the times, and he's certainly not a right winger. He's definitely uh, a left winger, play a right-hand shot playing his off wing, where this is where he shines. He's played it all his life, and he could not adjust to the right side. And he's, 
he's been in there very, very well and has given us a, a strong line in them and made Thompson available for the other line, which so hopefully give us a little more depth. All right, now you made a statement and I concur 100% with it is the fact that Nedimansky could be one of the 10 best hockey players in the National Hockey League. Well, Sid, there's no question about that. I don't think there's a hockey player in the game that has all the uh, tools and the basic fundamentals of Nedimansky. And if he put his, as I always have said in the past, his best foot forward, he'd just be a tremendous hockey player, very capable of at least scoring 45, 55 goals for us. You know, talking about Nedimansky and LeBrat and the fellows that played in Europe, you had several Europeans. In fact, you had LeBrat with you in Winnipeg when you were in world hockey. Is there that much difference for players coming out of Europe and playing in the smaller arenas, or is it just a mental thing that they have? Well, I think there is a difference. They're used to the bigger rinks, and they're used to not the physical contact they have here. And I think this is the biggest adjustment for them, and in particular in the WHA, it's not as strong as the National Hockey League. And uh, I just think that uh, you come here, they're checked a little closer, as I said with Anders Hedberg, who scored 70 goals in Winnipeg for me. And, He's in the National League. I anticipated him scoring 35 goals. I think he's very close. I think he has 30 now. And I felt that Elf Nielsen would be the premier player. And uh, I think he's proved that to the Rangers also. But the European players do have an adjustment. And unfortunately for us, at least, they had some professional experience in Canada playing in the WHA. Talking about the WHA, let's just spend a couple of minutes with that. The talk all over the country is the fact that the National League are within, I guess, an eyelash of merging. What are your thoughts of that? Well, I'm very happy with it, Sid. I, I think it's, it's good for hockey. Not so good for Mr. Eagleson and uh, the agents, but uh, I think it's gonna bring hockey back to reality, where it should be, where there isn't a lot of kids waiting for big contracts without proving that they are professional hockey players, and the, and the fact that it's gonna bring it back to the public. All right, now you coached in Winnipeg, and Winnipeg is out near my home. It's not considered a big city. Can Winnipeg afford to have a National Hockey League team? Well, Sid, they only have football and hockey, and I think they can't afford it. I know when I was there and there was talk of Winnipeg and uh, a merger, the fact that a lot of people are still uh, still wear the NHL label, and I know they put their deposits on their ticket. If they got into the National Hockey League, they would certainly buy season tickets. If not, they would like their money refunded. So I, d I think there is... Uh, I, I think they will do very well on Winnipeg. All right, I've just got a, a minute here, and I've got a clipping out of today's paper, Bob. They have a proposed alignment of the divisions. And the Adams, did, oh no, we'll go to our own division here. In the Norris division, they've got Montreal, Pittsburgh, Los Angeles, Detroit, and New England. Uh, why would they consider throwing, say, Washington out and adding New England? Well, I, I don't agree with their lineups because we still give them a very, very weak division, this nice division, Sid, and I think they have to correct that. I think uh, Bruce Martin has uh, the best uh, realignment that I've seen of any place, and I, I wish Bruce would uh, suggest this to Mr. Ziegler and the Board of Governors of the National Hockey League. Bobby, you've got a job to do. Keep this club winning. Thanks ever so much for stopping by. Now, uh, let's, let's pause for this message, and then I'll join Bruce Martin. the Boston Gardens live the game just a few minutes away from getting underway Detroit and the Bruins Sid uh, in your conversations with Bobby talking about the realignment if indeed there is to be a realignment and if the four teams from world hockey do join the present 17 teams it would be a total of 21 right That's and right. Uh, the only change really to be made would be the fact as you mentioned though, according to the report that was here in Boston the, the Washington Capitals would leave uh, the Norris division be replaced by New England and then they would uh, move into what I guess the Smythe division which is probably the weakest division in the National Hockey League right now. No, Washington well, they would, would move in the York. toughest That's division. Right. They would move in with both the Rangers and the Islanders, Philadelphia, uh, really, a yeah. tough, and Atlanta, a tough division. And I would think that Washington would complain about that, Bruce, because it would throw their possible playoff pitcher back eight or ten years probably. And then I think it was Winnipeg and Edmonton that would be thrust into the, the weak division. That's right. Which would perhaps make it even even weaker than it is now. Well, you mentioned this is only a proposal. I know that the world hockey people have not agreed to even come into the national or in, to yeah. merge as yet, but it looks as though it's going to happen. And uh, I would think that the governors are going to have to sit down and really give some thought to geographical locations of clubs before they realign. 
That's what Bobby was talking about. I woke up earlier than I should have this morning. Was just playing around with the with the uh, the teams and the figures and such. And uh, I tried to figure things out a little geographically and also to even up the divisions. And uh, what Bob was talking about, we were laughing about it on the bus coming into the gardens today. Was I tried to keep rivalries together like the New York Islanders and the New York Rangers and Winnipeg and Minnesota are reasonably uh, close to each other and would be natural okay. rivals. And then I added Buffalo in there to make a pretty good division. So that had the Islanders, the Rangers, Winnipeg, Minnesota, and Buffalo, right? Very strong. Well, argue if you want to, no? <laughs> then I figure Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, the two Pennsylvania teams, are natural rivals and should be in a division. And New England, I think, uh, particularly with a Howe family and that sort of thing, could be a natural for Detroit, so far as rivalry is concerned. And Washington is a good coming hockey team. And uh, so there are three, uh, the five teams I had there, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, New England, Detroit and Washington. And keep in mind, everybody plays everybody else four games, no matter what division they're in. So you see the same number of teams. And, and keep in mind that everybody's doing just what you've done here. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> then I had Vancouver and Edmonton and Los Angeles all out on the West Coast with Atlanta, Chicago, and St. Louis and reasonable Middle West or West Middle West, if you will. And that would leave me another one with Quebec, Montreal, Toronto, Colorado, and Boston. So it's fun to play with the names geographically and just how strong the teams are, too. And figure if we do indeed go to 21 teams, would this do it? Well, this would help, no doubt about it, Bruce. You should send this in to uh, John Ziegler, the president of the National League. And he'll be really happy. <laughs> he would be happy. Uh, I would like to see alignment similar to this, and uh, I'm looking forward to world hockey teams coming into the National League, and I just hope that when they draft, that they give them a chance to draft so they are competitive, not like when Washington come in and Kansas City come in, and the strong stay as strong as they were, and the weak just get weaker. Well, the Detroit Red Wings have not been defeated in their last seven games. They've won their last five in a row. And this afternoon, they take on the rugged Boston Bruins right here in the Gardens. And we'll be back with the opening face-off in just a moment. So you are looking down the corridor from whence will come the teams to get this hockey game underway in just a few moments. The Detroit Red Wings and the... Boston Bruins, the Bruins coming into the game having played 72 on the season and well out in front in the Adams division with a total of 90 points and closest to them Buffalo with 79 followed by Toronto and Minnesota. The Red Wings of course remain one point behind the fourth place Washington Capitals in the Norris division. The Wings holding on to last place and they have a game in hand to Washington. The Washington Capitals will be in action uh, this afternoon also. Washington is at Montreal to play the Canadians there. The Red Wings and the Boston Bruins have met already three times this season. The first game was a walk away for the Wings played at Olympia back in the middle part of November when Detroit won at handily seven to one. And then they came into Boston City in a game that was uh, very close as you recall and it ended up as a 6-5 victory for the Bruins. And then Boston returned earlier this month into Detroit's Olympia and whipped the Red Wings six to four. But it's been a good series on the season thus far. And this is a big game for the Wings and for Boston. Boston have been criticized as of late, Bruce, that they are not playing well. Pittsburgh came in here just the other day and defeated them 3-1. The first time Pittsburgh has won a hockey game in this building since expansion. So in 11 years, Pittsburgh has failed to win in Boston. They come in and beat them. The Wings naturally are hoping that they can catch Boston on the, where they're not up in their game because they'd like to keep their string going too. One would have to wonder a little bit that, uh, and we have talked about this from time to time too, the Bruins are the oldest club in the National Hockey League uh, on an average basis. They have played, everybody feels, just to the utmost to their capacity, and uh, if they don't, they're going to hurt a little bit. And do you think maybe time has started to catch up with the Bruins even before this season is over? Yes, I definitely do. I think uh, Cheevers is uh, getting near the end of the line. They have two defensemen that I know that are, are up on age, Gary Doak and uh, Rick Smith. Uh, John Rattel is uh, no kid. Uh, he's getting up there. Uh, Cashman is getting up on age. They are a club that they better have some young fellows down in the minors somewhere that can replace them. They've come up with some good kids, a couple of American kids, and I keep thinking of uh, Miller. Uh, Miller for one, and uh, they're tough. I'm trying to think of names. O'Reilly. Uh, Terry O'Reilly has meant so much to this hockey club, and they are getting an awful lot of goals from a hockey player that is not supposedly a goal scorer in Wensick. Wensick has scored 28 or 29 goals to this hockey club, he was considered just to be one of their muscle men, rough, tough fellow, and probably a 10 or 12 or 15 goal scorer. Here he has already scored the 28 or 29, so that's a bonus for him. 
Well, while we were talking, you took a look at Dick Redman, who was sitting over along the Boston bench. You saw Jerry Cheevers will be starting in goal for the Bruins. Jimmy Rutherford for Detroit, and taking his spot on the Detroit bench will be the backup goaltender of the Red Wings, Rogie Vachon. So Jimmy Rutherford will start his 11th straight game. He started one just a game uh, prior to that 11-game string and won that one. And then uh, with the St. Louis loss to Vachon, and he started the last 11, and Rutherford has played exceedingly well. And now prior to the start of this game, the playing and singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous height for oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air came through through the night that our flag his name who sings the national anthem here as you look at the officials out in front of us now with Ron Wicks that's John D'Amico and Ray Scapanello skates into the picture for the Detroit Red Wings in goal on the right of the screen adjusting the mask is Jimmy Rutherford with Jerry Cheevers on the left side Rutherford we mentioned in his last 11 games with two losses two ties and the other seven on the victory side as for Jerry Cheevers he remains a fellow who can be pretty tough in that uh, net got a 3.10 goals against but he's won 20 of the Boston games this season with eight losses and eight ties and this hockey game is underway from the face off Tommy Bergman Foster moving around him Foster going into the Detroit zone with a shot and Rutherford just deflected it over the crossbar almost lost it coming right back now is Bergman Tommy shoots it into the corner in the Boston zone Wayne Cashman goes in after it he was tied up by Bergman so Foster moved in to pick it up now that's Rick Smith it bounced away from Stan Jonathan. Willie Huber hit the linesman D'Amico with it. Came right back to him. Coming out with it now, Tommy Bergman. It was too far for Perry Miller. Miller is up front with Reed Larson at the forward positions, and they are centered by Greg Carroll. Now here's Foster clearing it along the boards. Rutherford goes in behind his own goal. Didn't get it out. Kept in by Foster. Foster tried to center it. Went right through the goal tree. Stan Jonathan laid it back on the line to Smith. He took a bouncing shot. Loose out in front. And that puck just slid right to Rutherford. He holds on to it. And a big chance for Jonathan, but he never really did have full control. Well, it appeared as though he ran into his own player, ran into his own player, and dropped his stick. It, 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 the stick came out of his hand just when he was going to take the shot. The puck rebounded right out to Jonathan out in front. He took his time. He hit his stick against his own teammate skates, lost possession of the stick, and then couldn't get the shot away. Here now is Rick Middleton, number 16 of Boston, clearing it in behind the Detroit goal. The wings are back with Hogabaum, Woods, and Danny Bolda. Buck is still in the Detroit zone. Secord ran into Harper. It came back to Brad Park, and Paul Woods went down and blocked his shot. Slides back into the Boston zone. The Bruins have the play at center ace. Hogabaum knocked it away from Rattel, and it'll be Brad Park turning it back into his own zone. Now Park ahead to Milbury. Mike Milbury on the right side. This is Rattel carrying into the Detroit zone. He was given a bump by knocked down by Hamel and coming right back, Bolduck and Hogabomb. Danny Bolduck into the Boston zone with a shot and Cheevers got a piece of that. It's cleared ahead now to Secord. Secord dumping it into the Detroit zone. Rutherford out of the goal to play it away from Middleton. John Hamel starts out for the wings. Now Billy Hogabaum from the blue line. His shot knocked down at the line. Here's Woods going in after it. Being checked by Milbury. 
Danny Bolduck tried to swing it away, but Milbury covers up behind his own net. Cleared it now to Don Marcotte, now to McNabb, and on the right side, Middleton. That's Rick Middleton handing it to Marcotte, and it was Paul Woods that came back and covered up on him. Now Woods into the corner. Paul Woods deep in the Detroit zone, dropping it off for Perry Miller. Trouble out in front. Miller drove it to the corner. Here's O'Reilly with it. Perry O'Reilly off the side of the net. And his pass knocked away by Larson. McNabb handed it right back to O'Reilly. Now McNabb. Peter McNabb off the rim of the circle, put it right on the stick of Bolduck. And Danny Bolduck dumps it down the ice. Played two minutes, 40 seconds of the first period. Reed Larson in deep in the Boston zone. Gary Doak has him tied up. Now McNabb. His pass at center ice knocked away by Nedimansky. Dale McCourt got a stick on it, couldn't control it. Rick Smith has McNabb over the line. Here now Peter McNabb dumping it into the corner. Mark Hart and O'Reilly going after it. O'Reilly trying to pull away from Terry Miller. Miller moved in, took it away from him. Miller's pass didn't come out. Bounced off to the side of the net. Mark Hart holds it there. Now back on the line to Rick Smith. His shot was wide of the Detroit goal. Here's O'Reilly with it. Terry O'Reilly's pass, and that's Miller who stopped it. Coming out, Nedimansky. Nedimansky's pass was beyond the and There'll be an icing call as back after it is dope. And with no score in the game, we'll be back in just a moment. Something exciting is happening in small cars. AMC's new Spirit DL. Let the Spirit move you. Let the Spirit move you. Sporty looks, corduroy bucket seats, and a sleek instrument panel. Let the Spirit move you. Let the Spirit move you. Get into a great-looking, smooth-riding car and put some spirit in your life. American Motors has the Spirit. Let the Spirit move you. There is no score in the game. Boston has been doing most of the pressing thus far. Willie Huber is in behind his own goal. The wings have San Laurent, J.P. LeBlanc, and Errol Thompson up front. Here's a pass off the skate of Thompson. Now Thompson dumps it off to Willie Huber. The wings at center ice. Over the line, San Laurent. This pass broken up by Cashman, and Cashman shoots it down the ice. Back after it, Willie Huber. Huber out on the right side. LeBlanc didn't get it out. That's Milbury faking the shot. He handed it to Foster. Foster's pass broken up by LeBlanc. Willie Huber turns it in behind his own goal. Out on the left side, Errol Thompson didn't get it out. Stopped by Brad Park. So it'll be Tommy Bergman trying. Tommy played it behind the referee. It comes to Errol Thompson. Center ice to Sam Law. The pass went back of Thompson. Now Tommy Bergman at his own blue line with J.P. LeBlanc. Back to Bergman. Tommy hauled down by Foster, tackled by Foster. And here's Donovan going right in, scores. <laughs> well, talk about being able to take your time. Well, it's a mistake, though, by Tommy Bergman. He should have passed the puck. He was going to try and go around. Just and he was pulled down. There could have been a call on this. And just watch how... Jonathan walked in, and the time that he has, he stopped, and it was fired under Jimmy Rutherford's glove into the empty corner. Well, I kind of looked to see if the Wings gave any argument penalty-wise there to the referee, but they didn't. Now here's Middleton. His pass didn't get through. Bounces off to center ice. Redmond clearing it over on the opposite side. Billy Hogebaum lost it, covering up his Hamel. Now Paul Woods. Woods hands it off to Carroll. Greg Carroll was checked. It's driven in by Smith behind the Detroit goal. Now that's Smith with it, trying to center it. Harper knocked it away. Came right back to Smith, and it's tipped through Middleton. Here now, Dick Redmond. Redmond went around Paul Woods. Redmond setting up Rattel. He was checked right there by Harper. Then Hogebaum is given a goal, and Secord's going to go off. There's going to be a penalty coming up to the Bruins. And the Red Wings will have the extra man. We'll be back in just a moment. It's special. Ah, that looks really nice and cool. Well, Al Secord is off for slashing with the time of his penalty, 5 minutes and 11 seconds. And so the Red Wings, who trail 1-0 on the goal by Jonathan, the assist to Foster at 426. Detroit now will have the extra man. 
Play is back along the Detroit line with Miller's pass way out in front of Danny LeBratton. LeBratton goes digging after it. And as it's played by Rick Smith, finally, they call the icing. Cheevers was back there, and he touched it. It would have been waved off, but Cheevers more or less just took LeBratton out of the play. That last goal by Jonathan Sid was so very close to a penalty. Yes, I prior to the start, they gave Foster an assist on it, and he's the one that tackled. Uh, he pulled Tommy, Tommy Bergman. Bergman down, but Tommy Bergman should have made a play with the puck instead of gambling, trying to go around the last. He was the last man inside his zone, and uh, you just don't do that. You get pulled down, it cost him a goal. Brad Park a shot that's stopped by Rutherford. That's Perry Miller in behind his own goal. Detroit has the extra man for a minute forty. Dale McCord hands it off to Miller over to Larson on the right side. It skipped away from Nedimansky. Now here's Miller picking it up, taking it into the Boston zone. Danny LeBratton with it back along the line. LeBratton tried to set up Nedimansky. It went through him. Ned played it back to the line, and it bounced away from Reed Larson back out center ice. Larson pulling away from Bob Miller. Look out. His pass broken up by Schmott. Schmott drilled that shot. Rutherford knocked it away to the side of the net. Now Jimmy drops it off for Miller again with a minute 10 left in the penalty. The wings have not been dangerous on the power play thus far. They lead the league in power play goals. Over the line is Reed Larson, and the play went in offside. The wings are going to have to throw the puck into the zone by the looks of it because Boston's playing their defensemen up in front of their blue line. The forwards are picking up the two uh, wingmen coming out of the zone, and if you try to stick handle through that, you're usually beaten. Play will be just over the Boston line. A minute four left in the penalty. Now San Laurent comes out with Earl Thompson and LeBlanc. McCourt and Huber are the point men. Buck driven all the way down the ice. Jimmy Rutherford hands it off now to Willie Huber. One nothing on the goal by Jonathan from Foster at 426. This is San Laurent. San Laurent pulling away from Schmott. Schmott took the puck away from him. Thompson followed up. Harold Thompson still in the center ice zone. Detroit with the extra man for 40 seconds. Thompson stopped right at the line by Miller in Detroit. Just not moving right now. Dale McCourt being watched by Schmott. Now McCourt will carry it. His pass ahead to San Laurent. Three of the wings moving up. San Laurent stopped right at the line. Harold Thompson. Wings have not been dangerous at all with the power play. They have 15 seconds remaining as McCourt starts out. Off of Errol Thompson, Brad Park covered that up and shoots it back into the Detroit end. Willie Huber played it out on the right side to J.P. LeBlanc. Now LeBlanc, center ice, that skips off the stick of Errol Thompson. Penalty is over, Secord's on, and the teams are at full strength. Errol Thompson dropped it behind. Greg Jolly just came off the bench, plays it now, took a bump from... Terry O'Reilly, here's Thompson carrying over the line. He dropped it off for San Laurent. Back to Thompson with a shot, and it went wide. They bump in along the board. Greg Jolly couldn't get to it. It's picked up now by O'Reilly as Jolly was sent spinning. Play into the Detroit end, going in after it, Willie Huber. Over on the opposite side, J.P. LeBlanc. He's checked right there by Milbury. Milbury took a bump from Huber. San Laurent and O'Reilly in along the boards. They hold it there, face off to the right of the Detroit goal. We'll be back in just a moment. Teams are at full strength. Boston leads the game one to nothing. Buck in the Detroit zone. That's Hogabaum playing it in behind his own net, and Harper goes back after it. Wings continue to play without Dennis Pilar. There's that puck off the side of the net. And it's bounced right in front of the goal. Still bouncing around the shot right on. Rutherford to save. Amell sent it into the corner. Woods goes in after it. Now John Amell played it to the corner again. Some ferocious forechecking on the part of the Bruins. And O'Reilly kneels on the puck. Super Six Tire Center brings you moments to remember. Three brothers all played forward positions for the Detroit Red Wings in the 30s and the 40s. Who were they? The Wings just can't seem to get on track at all. Jimmy Rutherford came out and made a play on the puck. Didn't get it out. Stopped a little backhand shot from O'Reilly. So we're back now to the live action. This is O'Reilly playing it back on the point to Milbury. In behind the Detroit goal. It skips into the corner. Marcotte goes in with Hamel. Now it's O'Reilly again. Billy Hogabaum fell down. O'Reilly put it right to the goal mouth, and Rutherford's going to grab it and hold on. And the play will stay to the left side of the Detroit net. We started to mention the fact that the Wings continue to play without the services of Nick Livett and Dennis Polanich, both on the injured list. 
Back in action, though, is Greg Jolly. John Hamel takes Marcotte into the boards there. And now the play still in the Detroit zone. Here's Gary Doak with a shot, and Hogabaum knocked it down. He starts Bullduck out on the right side. Woods coming up with him. Here's Bullduck. Bullduck holding up his pass. Hogabaum was all covered by Jonathan. Into the corner now is Cashman. In behind his own goal. 11 minutes, 7 seconds to go. First period. 1-0 Boston. Now Gary Doak. Puck came out center ice. Hamel sent it right back in. Cheevers playing it into the corner. Bolduck went in after it. Danny Bolduck headed for the moment. Still battling for it. His pass broken up by Cashman. Now Smith plays it all the way down the ice. They waved off the icing. So Detroit's going to have to go back and play it. John Hamel. Hamel on the right wing now to Bolduck. Danny Bolduck played his college hockey in the area with Harvard. Now it comes out center ice for Cashman. Cashman ahead to Jonathan. He's stopped by Harper. Here's Bolduck again. Bolduck went around Smith. Pulled up along the board. His pass off the stick of Billy Hogabaum. Jonathan goes into the corner after it. Played it right to his own net. Now it's Smith over on the right side to Doak. Gary Doak's pass bounced out center ice. Going back after Terry Harper. Harper left it there for Woods and took a bump from Jonathan. Then Bolduck was slapped on top of the head. And the play went back in offside into the Detroit zone. Woods and Jonathan are shoulder to shoulder. Jonathan was working on Harper. I think Jonathan would like to get at Harper a little bit, but uh, the Wings are going to have to try and start forcing the play. Jonathan took Harper into the boards there, and Harper just more or less turned around to tie him up. This could boil into something. They're all over along the far wall now trying and the to... the Boston uh, bench is empty, and here now the Red Wings are moving. I say empty. They started they quite a few players off the Boston bench, which is, is not legal, actually. So while they continue to mill around, the Lions went in the middle of it all. We'll be back in just a moment. Don Cherry in behind the Boston bench. There were no penalties handed out. I'll tell you, Harper had a, quite a conversation with referee Ron Wicks on his way to the Detroit bench. Now Milbury cleared it into the Detroit zone. Rutherford out of the net. Playing it away from Middleton. Danny LeBratton and Rattel go into the corner after it. Rattel comes out with it. Sets up Secord. He shot wide. Now Milbury... Playing it in behind the net again to Middleton. Here's Middleton again to Rattel with a shot. Hit the side of the net. And Perry Miller starts out. Now Miller turning again in behind the Detroit goal. Trying to get the wings organized. They have Netamansky, LeBratton, and McCord up front. We have 9 minutes 35 seconds to go in the first period. Pass went off Dale McCord. Rolls back to the Boston line. Milbury has it there for the Bruins. Middleton was checked by LeBratton. Back it comes to Perry Miller. A short pass to LeBratton. Middleton knocked it away. That's Rattel. He shot wide. Secord holds it in. Secord. He was checked by Netamansky. Larson has LeBratton moving. Danny LeBratton over the line. McCourt trailing. LeBratton went around one man. That was Brad Park. And then coming out of the net, Cheevers took it right off his stick. Well, hockey fans, during this break in the action, why not take time out to enjoy a cold, refreshing Verner's? Remember, whatever you do, don't get caught with your burners down. Here's a shot where Jean Rattel gets a loose puck out in front. Actually hit the post behind Jimmy Rutherford. Bounced from behind the net. Dale McCord, LeBratton, and Netamansky remain the forward line for the wings with Miller and Larson just along the Boston blue line. McCord will go in against McNabb. Now the play went right to Jerry Cheevers. He clears it on the left side to Marcotte. Marcotte out at center ice to McNabb with O'Reilly trailing. LeBratton knocked it away. Coming up now, Redmond. Shooting it into the Detroit zone. Reed Larson turns at his own line with it. Playing it back now to Perry Miller and back to Larson. Now Larson bringing it out to center ice. Dumped it over the line. LeBratton was in ahead of the puck. That's offside. The Red Wings and the Boston Bruins playing their fourth and final game against one another this season. After this game this afternoon, Detroit will have eight left. We'll be in Olympia Stadium tomorrow afternoon with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Then Tuesday and Wednesday out on the coast. Tuesday at Vancouver, Wednesday at Los Angeles. A week from tonight, Los Angeles will be in Detroit. Then Sunday, Minnesota and Detroit. The Wings will finish the season with a game at Montreal, at Pittsburgh, and then Montreal plays the final game of the season, April 8th at Olympia. Danny LeBratton had a skip by him out to center ice. 
Rick Smith back to his own blue line, off to Dwight Foster, who wheels it right back in. Rutherford in behind his own goal. His clearing pass was knocked away by Cashman. Here's Cashman right out in front, but making the play there was Reed Larson. It slid into the Boston zone with Smith back after it. Center ice pass to Foster. He played it behind Cashman. Now Cashman in front of Foster. Going into the corner after it is Larson. Reed Larson was shoved off the puck by Foster. Foster came up with it. McCourt tied him up for the moment. Now Foster and Larson in along the boards. It dumped off now to Cashman right out in front. And it was Perry Miller that knocked it away. Jonathan goes after it. Stan Jonathan circling. Here's Jonathan checked by Errol Thompson. And Nedomansky starts out with Thompson. Nedomansky trying to go through. He's hauled down. There'll be a penalty coming up to Redmond. He'll go off. And the Wings will have their second power play chance. And with a score, one to nothing, Boston will be back in a moment. Well, the Wings have not played a strong first 12 minutes of this hockey game. Uh, the forechecking of Boston has been just terrific. Nedamaski tries to break through the middle, and he gets pulled down and hooked by Big Redmond. Red. And Redmond wound up getting a hooking penalty at 12-11. Penalty box here in Boston is right beside the Boston bench. Here's Willie Huber. Huber with a shot. He shot it wide. He had all the time in the world. McCourt held it in at the blue line. Dale McCourt fired it, and Cheever stopped that. Here's San Leroy. Tried to center it. Goes in after it with Brad Park chasing him. San Leroy ahead to Errol Thompson. He took a jolt. That puck's still loose in the corner. Going after it is Park. He's tied up along the boards by Errol Thompson. They'll keep the face off to the right side of Cheever. You must remember this, that every time Boston take a penalty, Boston has the worst penalty-killing record of the teams in the National League, and the Wings are the leading penalty scorers in the National League. They uh, scored nine penalty shorthanded goals in the last three games, which is just a terrific record. It's hard to account for the Red Wings not being a contender for the playoffs and yet leading the league in... 75 power play, power play goals, goals, nine in the last three games, three in each of the last three. Now here's Nedimansky. Back it comes to Huber. Willie Huber didn't take the shot. Dale McCourt wound up. Stopped right there by Foster. McCourt takes it again. Foster broke his stick. Now McCourt's pass off the side of the net to San Laurent. Back on the line to Nedimansky. He took the shot. Blocked right there. Nedimansky controls it. Here's Ned with it. Going to the circle. A backhand shot went wide. McCourt will chase it in along the board. Now McCourt checked right at the line by Foster. Who lost his stick. And still made the play. Nedimansky, his pass went way behind Errol Thompson. Brad Park has it, dumping it down the ice. Jimmy Rutherford steers it off on the right side to Nedimansky. He was stopped right there by Miller. And it's Boston holding it. Here's Schmoss with Miller out in front. And the pass was behind him. Nedimansky, 40 seconds left in the power play as Nedimansky moves it out to center ice with McCourt. McCourt dumping it off to the side of the goal. And Cheever stops it easily, handing it off to Miller. Miller checked in behind the net by San Leroy. Two of them go down, moving into it, trying to get it loose. Was pulled duck he did, and Errol Thompson scores. And the Wings have a power play goal. I was trying to figure out a win and made the play, and it was Bolduck who set up Errol Thompson. Yes, Bolduck give it to St. Leroy. I think St. Leroy made the final pass out. Perfect pass out to Errol Thompson out in front, and he had no problem at all beating Cheever's on the long side, just a perfect pass. Bolduck to St. Laurent. St. Laurent to Thompson out in front of the net all by himself. Thompson just jumped into the hole as though, boy, give me the puck now. And they did. Put the wings, although they've been badly outplayed, put them back on even terms. And now the wings have their 76th power play goal on the season. Play goes back into the Detroit zone. Now that's Greg Jolly ahead to Woods. Paul Woods, center ice, right side, Bolduck, over the line. It's knocked away from Bolduck. Secord's pass went behind Middleton. Going after it, Paul Woods, and the play is whistled down offside into the Detroit end. So it's Thompson from San Laurent, Bolduck at 13.49, a power play goal. You can win a $50 gift certificate in the Acme Red Wing prize drawing. Watch for the winner today between the first and second periods. Acme, where they have more, and they have it for less. Errol Thompson with that protective cage that he continues to wear with both a broken nose and a broken jawbone. He says that he is still 
has a few problems with the, a little creak, I guess, in his jaw from where his jaw was broken earlier in the season. And he had the unfortunate accident when he came back and playing with the with the shield, the puck bounced up underneath the shield and broke his nose. And both injuries off shots by his own team. So. Right. Now this is Greg Jolly in behind Rutherford. Jolly dumping it out on the right side. Bolduck couldn't hold it in. He rather did get it out. It's held in the Detroit zone, but coming out with it now is Jolly. Greg Jolly on the move. Here's Jolly over the line. Jolly trying to move around Gary Doak. Doak has him tied up. Paul Woods digs it out of the corner, and Rattel moved in to take it away from him. Ahead to Middleton. It's dumped deep into the Detroit end. Rutherford out of the goal. Playing it now to Tommy Bergman on the left wing to Woods. Paul Woods. He's lost it to Rattel and got it away and sent it out center ice. Back at his own blue line is Doak. Former Red Wing cleared it on the left wing for Marcotte. Now back to Doak. Gary Doak dumping it along the boards in behind the Detroit goal. Rutherford shot it away from Marcotte. Paul Woods has it. Now Woods. Ahead to Jolly. Jolly out at center ice. Jolly hooked from behind by McNabb. Slid it into the Boston end. Four minutes, 45 seconds to play in the first period. Game tied at 1-1. Digging into the corner, Terry O'Reilly. O'Reilly put it out in front. There's Brad Clark, and his shot deflected by J.P. LeBlanc. Now LeBlanc moves after it. He's got Larson coming up the right side. LeBlanc with Thompson trailing. Dropped it off to Thompson with a shot. And Cheevers made the save. San Laurent bumps in along the boards, and Park starts O'Reilly back. Now O'Reilly into the Detroit zone. He is run into by Reed Larson. Pass it back to Larson. Back it comes to Perry Miller. San Laurent coming up with him. LeBlanc trailing. Miller's pass to San Laurent. Andre San Laurent trying to get it out in front. And then J.P. LeBlanc is hooked down. There'll be a penalty coming up to the Bruins. And the Wings will have still another power play chance. And we'll be back with it after we pause for this. This game has opened up a little bit. And by the fact that it's opened up, the Wings have had a few scoring chances. They went right in. Cheevers made a good play on St. Laurent, and there Milbury gets a stick tangled with the Detroit player, pulls him down, and gets a hooking penalty at 15.59, gives the Wings another opportunity on their power play. And so the Red Wings, who have scored on their last power play, get the chance now with San Laurent, Thompson, and Nedimansky up front, McCord and Larson. Miller won the draw, and the puck picked up by Brad Park, who's fired the length of the ice. Laid off the boards by Rutherford. San Laurent hands it off to Nedimansky over on the wrong wing. Here's Nedimansky charging over the line. He played it to McCourt. It was knocked away by Schmatz. It was kept in by Larson, and Larson played it all the way back out center ice with Thompson just coming up. Reed Larson back to Thompson on the left wing. It bounced. Thompson over on the right side to Nedimansky. His pass went high in the air. It came now to Dale McCord, a rolling, bouncing puck. McCord goes to the corner, and Park moved in, took it away. Cleared to the line, kept in by Larson. He dumps it ahead to, to Nedimansky, back to Larson. Larson over on the other side to Errol Thompson. Thompson, back to Reed Larson. Larson hands it off to Nedimansky, and that puck bounced off his stick, came back toward the line, and it's dumped down the ice. Going after it, Miller, and Larson beat him there. Cleared right to Rutherford with Thompson, going into the corner, a minute left in the penalty. Detroit with the extra man. Three minutes to go in the first period. Game tied at 1-1. Harold Thompson coming out center ace. Detroit with the extra man. On the left side to San Laurent. Andre San Laurent trying to pull away from Park. He lost it. It's picked up again. And the Bruins clear it back toward the line. Harold Thompson couldn't hold it in. 35 seconds to go on the penalty. Nedimansky. Now Ned still holding it in center ice. Over on the right side, too far for San Laurent. Cheevers laid it in behind his goal. It came out in front, but Marcotte is there, and Marcotte wraps it down the ice. 20 seconds left in the penalty. Well, the Wings, when they made a trip to Denver, Colorado, for a game against the Rockies early in the season, were accompanied by a photographer. And it's kind of fun to see the way they travel, and you'll be able to watch that between the first and second periods of this hockey game. Here now is Greg Carroll trying to center it. Knocked away, good defensive play by Redmond. Picked up now by J.P. LeBlanc. J.P.'s pass off the boards into the corner to LeBratton. Back on the line, Tommy Bergman shot. That hit Greg Carroll, picked up by Redman, who shoots it down the ice. Penalty over, and there'll be an icing call as Bergman goes back to touch it. And the play comes back into the Boston zone. And so the NHL season winds down, but not necessarily for the Wings. 
Two more meetings of the Montreal Canadiens coming up, including a game that you can see right here, the 4th of April, 8 o'clock, on TV 50. Look at Rick Middleton over along the Boston bench getting a new stick. Well, the Red Wings scored a power play goal, but that particular time, Sid, they uh, didn't threaten much. Well, they were in the Boston zone a couple times, and they just got a little too cagey with the puck trying to make plays. I thought Reed Larson should have shot one time when they spotted him out in the middle, even though it was from maybe 50 feet. Now Dwight Foster's pass. Dan Jonathan really hauled the Red Wing player Woods down, and the referee just let her go, and Bobby Crom up on the bench is screaming this time. Oh, Jonathan reached out, grabbed Woods by the chin, and just hauled him down. And it's going to get a little physical. And there's Jonathan making another run at Woods. Puck came back to the line. Gary Doak has it there. Played it in behind the net. Cashman takes it. Now Cashman hands it back to Jonathan. Back on the line to Milbury. Milbury shot knocked down by Willie Huber. Going in after it is Bolduck. Bolduck playing it back to Tommy Bergman. Out on the right side, Huber comes out center ice. Hogabom with Woods on the move. Over the line, Billy Hogabom. And Woods was spun around by Cashman. The puck loose off to the side of the net. And Cheevers, who had come out, was almost out of position. Now it's Milbury. 50 seconds remaining in the period. Paul Woods goes in after it. Woods checked in behind the goal. He's met by two men, Jonathan Foster. Now that's Tommy Bergman's pass stopped by Cashman. Cashman's pass broken up by Tommy Bergman. Bolduck starts out. 35 seconds in the period. With Milbury there, Bolduck over the line. The rest of the wings changing. And so he was all alone, and it'll be Brad Park. 25 seconds in the period. Now Park with Cashman way ahead of him, and Cashman was well offside as the play will come back to center right. You know, Bruce, just in the play a moment ago where you said Cheevers was caught out of position, big Willie Huber was in deep, and he just stretched out, hit the Boston player's stick, knocked the puck off his stick, and it hit the post. Although Cheevers didn't, I don't think he even realized that the puck hit the post. It was that close to going in and putting the wings ahead. Carroll with San Laurent on the right side and Thompson on the left wing now for Detroit with 20 seconds to go in the first period. The game tied at 1-1. That's San Laurent. He went over the line, shot it in behind the goal along the board, Brad Park. Park was checked right there by Carroll. This will be Rick Smith. Nine seconds to play in the period. The Bruins trying to run out the time. And they'll do it now with just two seconds remaining. The wing's not challenging, and the buzzer goes to end the first period of play. The Detroit Red Wings have taken a 2 to nothing lead. I'm sorry that the game tied at 1-1 and goals by Stan Jonathan of Boston and Errol Thompson on the power play by the Wings at 13:49. We had three penalties in the first period, all three of them to the Bruins, Secord, Redmond, and Milbury. And the shots and goal. Boston six. And not many, five for Detroit and six for the Bruins. And where the Wings did have uh, the three power play chances, uh, they could have had perhaps a couple of more. And the first goal scored by Boston came about when Foster hauled down Tommy Bergman and Jonathan picked up the loose puck and just stood for about two seconds in front of Rutherford and then fired it by him. And Thompson got it back on the power play with Redmond off. And San Laurent Bolduck at 13.49 drew the assist. Boston six shots and Detroit five. So that's it from the Boston Gardens here in Boston. The score tied. Detroit won. The Bruins won. We'll be back in just a moment. Well, this is the 36th game of the season on the road for the Detroit Red Wings. And as we mentioned coming on to our telecast tonight, it was not a happy uh, start of the season. Well, actually, the Wings won two and tied one in their first three games on the road. But then came those 23 without a victory. And now take a look at the last games that the Red Wings have played on the road. Going back a week or so, the Montreal Canadiens and the Wings went right into the forum in Montreal and tied them 3-3. Three to three. Prior to that, they had beaten Montreal 5-3 to three at the forum. Then uh, they went into Washington with them. At St. Louis, defeated the Blues. At Chicago, to beat the Blackhawks. And... Uh, at Toronto, where they beat the Maple Leafs, and they played a period of hockey here uh, against the Boston Bruins, and it is one-to-one. -one. And as we mentioned, the Wings with still games to come, and they'll head out for the West Coast Tuesday with a game against Vancouver and Wednesday at Los Angeles. There's a lot of preparation that goes into making these trips, and throughout the season, the Wings fly out of Detroit. Well, the 40 road games they have, trips to the various NHL cities. 
And as we mentioned, a lot of planning goes into making these road trips come off without a hitch. And now here's Bud Lynch to tell you how it all happened. Plans for a road trip with the Red Wings starts long before the beginning of the season when General Manager Ted Lindsay, along with Secretary Ruth Hoffman, develop a schedule of games for the year with the National Hockey League offices in Montreal. Decisions are then made regarding which trips will be taken by charter airlines, which ones will require commercial airlines. Ruth then proceeds to finalize a very efficient schedule of flights, hotel accommodations, and other arrangements for the 40 trips. And Al Coates, the Director of Publicity and Promotions, doubles on the trip as road manager, making sure that all of Ruth's plans for the flights, the buses, and the hotel rooms are carried out as planned, along with her able secretary, Kathy Best, another member of the office staff, Suzanne Warsick, secretary to TV producer, Marvin Muse. As the team goes, so goes enough equipment for 20 players, and that requires a lot of efficient packing. The equipment manager, Dan Olsevich, along with trainer Lefty Wilson, have the responsibility of packing and transporting all skates and uniforms in the familiar red travel bags. Sticks, skate sharpener, various other gear also go along on the trip. And for each of the trips, the gear is packed and then unpacked for the games and then packed again for the next trip at least 40 times a year. Lefty Wilson gets his exercise tossing the packed bags on a hand truck. Notice how this exercise has helped Lefty maintain his youthful figure. Lefty and Ole load up the Red Wing truck for transport to Detroit's Metropolitan Airport. Any volunteers for the Java trainer or equipment manager for the Red Wings? And then after the equipment arrives at Metro, Lefty and Ole finally get a break. The baggage handlers for the airlines take over and make sure every piece of equipment is carefully loaded into the cargo area of the plane. This particular flight happened to be a trip earlier this year aboard United Airlines to Denver for a game with the Colorado Rockies. And now Coach takes charge of handing out the boarding passes, make sure that all the other flight arrangements are completed for the prompt departure. And as the players board the plane, they're greeted by a United Airlines flight attendant. Just before the takeoff, though, Reed Larson is given a tour of the flight deck, meets the crew, the captain, the co-pilot, and the flight engineer. Just before the takeoff, Reed wanted one more word with the pilot, who happened to be, uh-oh, Paul Woods. Reed knows Paul can fly the plane? No, he can't. Then it's departure time for Denver, hopefully with the real pilot at the control. Just how does everyone pass the hours of traveling? Well, they play cards. And others play cards. Maybe backgammon. Or read books. Or just sleep. That's it, a very brief look at the one trip with the Red Wings. And so we've played one period of hockey here at the Boston Gardens as you watch them resurface the ice with a score tied 1-1 and a goal by Jonathan from Foster at 426. And then the Red Wings on the power play as Earl Thompson gets his 21st of the year. San Laurent Bolduck at the assist is, uh, on that goal at 1349. Jimmy Rutherford in the Detroit net and Jerry Cheevers in the goal for the Boston Bruins. And Boston outshot the wings by a rather narrow margin of six and five. So that's the story of 20 minutes of hockey. We'll be back with the Boston Gardens in just a moment. back with you live from here at the Boston Gardens where the Red Wings and the Boston Bruins have played a first period one-to-one -one tie. Uh, Sid, six shots by one team, five by another would indicate that uh, it was a rather close checking first period of hockey. Seen that way to you? Yes. Uh, Boston were quite physical. They, they dominated the period, Bruce. They had the play in Detroit zone much more than Detroit in the Boston zone. The Wings capitalized on the penalty. They had a chance to go ahead because of penalties and the fact that Boston took all three penalties. 
I didn't think the Wings played near as well as they'd been playing, and it could be the way the Boston club play, especially when O'Reilly and McNabb and those fellows come out. They throw the puck deep into Detroit zone. They move all three forwards in, and they've got the Wings stopped deep in their, in their zone. Jimmy Rutherford wasn't called upon to make real big saves, but the play was in the area where the Bruins had chances to score, and I would think the Wings are going to have to come out and skate more, try to make Boston make mistakes, because their defense is very, very vulnerable for players like LeBratton and uh, uh, Bolduck and fellows that have the speed getting around the outside. Sid, uh, we've uh, talked about this on previous broadcasts and telecasts, that the Boston Garden Ice is the shortest in the National Hockey League. Oddly enough, in a major league, you'd think all of the ice surfaces would be exactly the same dimensionally, but this is an old building and an old sheet of ice, and it is uh, the shortest in the league. So they have made up the difference between the two blue lines. So consequently, it would seem to me that it would be a great advantage to the home team, the fact that uh, they can well go in onside while other teams are very often caught offside. Well, there's no doubt it is an advantage to the home club, Bruce. The Detroit Hockey Club can go into Montreal. I mean, starting, say, way yeah. back since, since hockey's been played in Detroit, into Toronto, into Montreal, into New York, and their records are not that bad. But here in this Boston arena throughout the years, the Wings have won very few hockey games. The Bruins come into, into Detroit, and Detroit don't seem to have that much of a problem with them. This short ice here in center ice, it's nine feet shorter. That doesn't appear to be that much, but nine feet makes quite a difference because it's chopped right out of center ice, and it gives them a, a chance of moving their defense up. They practice here. They know this board, their boards very well. The boards are so different. There's so many things that are an advantage to the Boston Bruins. Well, when you played uh, here in Boston, did you find yourself as a centerman having to adapt to it? Yes, you have to. It takes a period or two to do it then. You know, another thing that people don't realize, this is, I'm going to say, a station, the North Station, I believe it is, the whole complex. When you stand out in center ice before a game starts or standing at the blue line waiting while they play the anthem, I recall years ago, you'd think, now am I nervous or whatnot? Your legs would be <laughs> trembling. And it was the fact that a train would be pulling into the station and the whole ice seems to vibrate. And I think players are aware of this. Uh, there's a, a different feeling playing here in Boston. I, uh, I can't help but think of the old Chicago Stadium where uh, when they had, and I guess they still use it, though I haven't noticed it as much, but in our broadcast location, once they began to play that huge pipe organ they have there, the whole place would start to vibrate and you wondered if you were gonna last the game. Well, here at the Boston Gardens, we've played 20 minutes of hockey, 40 still to go. The end of the first period of the game all tied at one aside. We'll be back with more after this. So we are back with you once more from the Boston Gardens. The Red Wings and the Boston Bruins all tied at one aside. Well, an old friend of ours, a pottery from some time, Bob Wilson, the voice of the Boston Bruins here in Beantown, is joining now today. Bob, I read an article in a local paper this morning where you and your wife are taking time off April the 8th. Well, that's pending the buy. We're taking some time off. I think the buy is pretty well assured, so we're yeah. going to take four days and go to Bermuda. First time either one of us has ever been there. Well, let's, let's talk about the Bruins for a while. They're, they're saying, you know, the articles say that they're not playing as well and they have to get down to basics. Now, you, you follow the club. You travel with them on the road. You're the voice of the Bruins. Are they playing that bad? They're still up there in first place all by themselves. Yeah, they are. They really are. They have not played well since the... Uh, they played the Soviet, uh, Soviet wings here uh, on January the 9th, and they really got blown out in that game, and they have not really played well except in spots since then. They haven't been able to put any kind of an unbeaten streak together of more than two or three games like they had in the first uh, half. They had a 10-game unbeaten streak. They had another one where they uh, had lost one out of 15 or something like that, and that's what I mean by playing badly compared to some of the poorer clubs in the league. They have not been playing badly, but for their standards, they have. And I don't know, Don Cherry doesn't know what it is. He says, perhaps it's my fault. Maybe I don't open the door often enough. But I've gotten caught on several bench miners with too many men on the ice. But uh, he says, I really don't know. If I did, we'd be playing better. Bob, you know, Bruce and I were talking a while ago, and we mentioned the fact that this rink is a little shorter than most rinks, 191 feet long. And in a way, it's made to order for the Bruins here because of their O'Reilly's and McNabb's and their 1-6 and whatnot. They just gang attack and run over you instead of going 
Fire. And the corners are tight, too. It uh, makes it easier to play the puck in the corner in this rink, I think. And it's narrower. It's uh, yeah, two, or, right. two or three feet narrower, right. which uh, it gives the Bruins the advantage. And one thing that a lot of fans, uh, they may know but they don't realize, is that all of that space is lost between the two blue lines at center ice. And the other team coming in is used to making a pass that maybe travels 40 feet. You can only go 25 feet in this building. That's so true. <laughs> All right, how about your goaltending? You know, Cheevers is getting up on age, and uh, I notice he plays the bulk of the games. Uh, has Cheevers been up to par, or has he been? I think Cheevers perhaps uh, is not in the best shape that he could be in, number one. And I think one of the places his age is beginning to show is that once he goes down, he has difficulty getting up again. Right. And there have been a lot of rebound goals scored because he had gone down toward the post or slid by the post couldn't get back in the net and this has been his problem and it's only come in the in the second half of this season it hasn't been something that's been bothering him all along and I'm I'm really afraid that maybe Cheevers is not the goaltender that he was last year well he uh, looks awful sharp yeah. every time I see him <laughs> Bob just talked to that the fact that the Bruins are considered the oldest team playing in the National League right today but yet they have some real good young hockey players you know their system much better than we do. Do they have replacements for Doak and for Rick Smith and players like that that are back behind their blue line? No, they don't. What, what you see is what you get on the Bruins' defense. Uh, the only player who isn't playing that could possibly play is Dennis O'Brien. Uh, Dennis O'Brien is not an all-star defenseman by any manner of means, although he will have his good games from time to time. This is the weak spot on the Bruins. I think in this next draft, they've got to go for someone to play back of the blue line to give Brad Park some help. Well, now let's just talk about the next draft. The next draft is going to come if what we read in the papers is true that the world hockey is going to come in, four teams in world hockey, and that will probably make more players available. I'd like to hear your version of if there is a merger between the National League and the world hockey. Well, I don't really think uh, that it's going to affect many of the teams. I think what it's going to do down the road a ways is going to affect the league. But the, the WHA teams that are going to come in unless they get the rights to the players in Birmingham and the former players of Indianapolis and uh, the other two teams that are right. folding, unless they get all those players and the National Hockey League can't draft from them, they're not going to have that many players that are good quality National Hockey League players. They've only got four or five now on each of those teams where Detroit has 13 or 14 right. legitimate National Hockey Leaguers. Well, I don't know, Bob. They, you know, they, they're talking that if the National League, if they are, if they are allowed, or they're allowed in, but now if World Hockey wants to come in, that they can only protect, say, two goaltenders and two other players, uh, some of those players have to be available. Then. Well, you take, a, say, Montreal calls all 34 of the players they've got on the string home. Right. Who's left? That's right. <laughs> that is so true. All right, there's also a little controversy going. The owners of the Boston Bruins have said that if Hartford is allowed to be in, that they would sue the National League. Uh, they uh, sort of a retraction on that but what is the story behind that well it, it invades the territorial rights of the Bruins much like the Islanders did with the New York Rangers in that although the city is more than 50 miles away if you drew a circle 50 miles around Hartford and 50 miles around Boston much of it would intersect so the Bruins are claiming much of the Hartford territory as their own that's the basis of what they would uh, would try to sue on whether or not it's a legitimate beef I don't know I, it's not up to you and me to decide no, anyway. Wouldn't, Bob, wouldn't that, though, make a, a real rivalry, Hartford against Boston? Excellent. Or? be an excellent rivalry. But now they're talking about putting Hartford in the Patrick Division, which doesn't make any sense at all, and putting Quebec in the Adams Division. And the Adams Division is the best division in hockey, I think, really. Well, I think it is. I think the Adams and the Patrick are the two divisions that have the better teams, the better competition right, in right. those two divisions. All right, one final question. Can this Bruin Hockey Club win the Stanley Cup? With a certain amount of breaks, yes, they can. They are good enough to win it. Whether they'll get the goaltending that you need in playoffs, they haven't been getting it for the last month and a half, say. Whether that can turn around, that would be the key to any playoff victory. And then hopefully Montreal would play somebody else and get knocked off. Bob, thanks ever so much for stopping by. The very best to you. Have a nice vacation. Thank you, much. And now let's go back to Bruce Martin. Okay, Bob Wilson, the radio voice of the Boston Bruins, receives from Panasonic a six-band radio, including FM, AM, and public service bands. The portable unit also lets you monitor audio of your favorite television program with rich, full sound from a four-inch speaker. Information radio from Panasonic. Here in Boston, with the team coming back out onto the ice, the game is tied. 1-1 will return for the start of the second period in just a moment. Well, our act 
Acme Red Wing hockey drawing held just prior to today's game between the Wings and the Boston Bruins and the winner is Rita Sierra of Birmingham, Michigan. So Rita, we congratulate you. You can call 895-7000, make arrangements to claim your prize. Bruce, I just want to mention the fact that the folks up St. Clair Shores way, uh, there's a real good junior hockey game. The Detroit Junior Wings enter the semifinal playoff round of the Great Lakes Junior Hockey League on Sunday. St. Clair Shores Civic Arena. And they're going to play the third place Wayne Chiefs and the game time is 7 o'clock. We await the start of the second period. The referee, Ron Wick, will whistle the two teams to center ice and get things going with a game tied at 1-1. Boston with six shots and Detroit with five in the first period. Out of town, there's one game going this afternoon. The Washington Capitals are at Montreal. We've had no report of that. The Wings and the Toronto Maple Leafs at Olympia Stadium in Detroit tomorrow afternoon. We'll be with you on WJR Radio beginning at 10 minutes before 4 o'clock. You look at Jerry Cheever. And all the marks on the mask every time he says he's been hit in that mask. Puts another notch on it, or if you would, and it shows where he again would have had stitches. Right. They had a lot of them in that too. Greg Carroll, as you watch Jimmy Rutherford, was all set to take the face off and suddenly realized that his stick was broken. Or else he had the wrong one, I'm not sure which, and goes back and picks up another. So he is in against Dwight Foster. Bucks went to the Boston blue line. Gary Doak has it there. Doak's pass knocked away by Perry Miller. The wings again start a line with two defensemen up front. Perry Miller and Reed Larson centered by Carroll. Carroll and Jerry Cheevers at each other tied up for the moment. Here's Reed Larson trying to hold it in. Didn't do it. Jonathan drops it back for Foster. His pass broken up by Miller. Perry Miller tipped it ahead. Carroll took a swing at it. Didn't get it. And then Reed Larson backhands it in. Cheevers whacks it along the boards on the opposite side for Jonathan. Pass broken up right at the line, and that pass from Carroll offside, and the play out over the Boston Blue Line. Greg Carroll, who came to the wings from Washington early in the season, there's Perry Miller, who is no stranger to Winnipeg. He played under Bobby Crom there a season or so ago. And he's playing very well. Bruce, we want to offer our congratulations to the Heartland Boilermakers. They're out in Livingston County. They won the Pee Wee A Division State Championship Sunday. Buck driven back into the Boston zone. Mike Milbury, number 26, hands it off to Brad Park. Game tied at 1-1. We've played just about a minute of the second period. Carroll knocked it away from McNabb. It's sent back into the Boston end and going back after it, Park. Now Brad Park starting out again. Tried to work away from Billy Hogabom. Hands it off to Milbury. Now Milbury shooting it into the corner in the Detroit end. Rutherford came out of the goal. Cleared it along the board. Togabom turning with it there. He was checked by O'Reilly. And it's Tommy Bergman who moves in to cover up. Tommy's pass off to Willie Huber. Huber didn't get it out. Here's Milbury with it. Put it right out in front. O'Reilly was there. Just failed to reach it. Perry Miller bumping in along the board with O'Reilly. Miller came up with a puck. And now Tommy Bergman too far for Hogabom. Milbury handing it back now at his own line to Park. And back it comes to Milbury. We played a minute and a half of the second period. Game tied at 1-1. Rutherford stops it in behind his own goal. Cleared it into the corner. Reed Larson starts Hogabom out. Miller coming down the left side. Perry Miller with Brad Park chasing him. Miller pulls up for the puck. Off to Hogabom with a shot deflected wide. Danny Bulldog, he and Marcotte do some bumping along the boards. And coming out with it is McNabb. Peter McNabb to center ace. McNabb trying to go through John Hamel. Put it right through the goal mount. Now Bolduck pulled away from Middleton, but the puck got away from him, and Rick Smith is at his own blue line with it. Now to Redmond. Dick Redmond dumping it into the corner. Harper goes in after it. Over on the right side, Bolduck was tied up. Hogabom starts out. Now Billy Hogabom dropped it off for Perry Miller. He's been on a long time. Bowled over by Smith. Here now Bolduck taking Harper's pass. Bolduck trying to work away from Secord. Got it out in front. Broken up there. John Rattel dropped it off to the side of the net. Redmond went in after it. Dick Redmond. He hands it off now to Smith. Rick Smith at center ice. Turned it into the Detroit end, but Secord way ahead of the pass. It's well offside. Game is tied one to one. We'll be back in just a moment. See all that. If your ordinary new car tires have less than 300 miles, 
you can trade in your four tires on a whole new set of four Michelin radios, just $200 plus tax at your Super 6 Tire Center. From the face-off, SJP LeBlanc in against Rattel. Rattel finally drove it into the Detroit end. Going in after it, John Hamel. Hamel tied up along the board by Rattel. Now that's Secord, number 20. Holding it in the corner, knocked away by LeBlanc. Rattel dug it out, hit the back of the net with it. Bolduck goes after it along the board, didn't get it out. Smith stopped it at the line. He's hit by LeBlanc. Rutherford tipped it into the corner. Rattel goes in after it. Now Rattel trying to set up Smith. Smith lost it. Here's LeBlanc coming out with Bolduck on the right side. LeBlanc hands it off to Bolduck going through. Coming out of the net. Paul Woods makes the score as Beavers came way out of the goal. And Woods following in picked up the loose puck after it looked as if Beavers had some stop. Two to one, Detroit. A terrific play started by LeBlanc and Bolduck's speed. He just jumped through the middle to follow the puck. Cheevers come out to make the play on him. Made the save on the puck as Bolduck couldn't quite get to it. Paul Woods followed in. Nobody near him at all. Just threw it in the empty net to give the Wings a 2-1 lead. Woods goal coming at 322 of this the second period. Jonathan bounced the puck right to the Red Wing goal. And it's down. It's loose out in front. Cleared away, though, and Dale McCourt brings it out as Boston came close. Over the line, Nedomansky pulling up from Milbury, handing it off to LeBratton. Danny LeBratton out in front to Reed Larson. And his shot deflected to the corner. Now the play back out center ice. Bolduck and LeBlanc will draw the assist on Wood's 13th goal of the year. Now it's Greg Dolly cleared it along the board, but not out. That's Stan Jonathan. Nedimensky knocked it away from him. Now Reed Larson on the left wing to Danny LeBratton. LeBratton starts Larson out from the blue line with a shot that goes wide. Cheevers playing it to Milbury in behind the Boston goal. The Wings lead it 2-1. to one. That's Foster. Center ice. Reed Larson knocked it away. Then Foster picks it up. Cleared it in behind the Detroit goal. Rutherford sends it into the corner to LeBratton. Danny LeBratton pulled away from Foster's check. Now LeBratton stick handles his way loose. Danny LeBratton bringing it out to center ice with McCord ahead of him. LeBratton over the line. Went to the corner around Brad Park. Centered it. That was knocked away. Bruins will bring it out. Foster. And at his own blue line, Dale McCourt takes over. We near the five-minute mark of the second period. Here is Nedimanski. Now Big Ned turns it off to Greg Jolly. Jolly swings it out to center ice. Thompson has it there. Harold Thompson chased by Marcott. The puck pulled loose. Here's Marcott with it. He took the shot, knocked away. It's loose off to the side of the net with Rutherford out of the goal and down on top of the puck. Finally holding it is Rutherford. As again, Boston on the wild scramble came very close. We'll be back in just a moment. such as this that make coaches go gray real early. Uh, Errol Thompson started this play in center ice, brought it back over his own zone, had the puck taken away from him. They did everything but put it in the net with Jimmy Rutherford outside the crease, but Jimmy finally got a hold of the puck. Now the play still deep in the Detroit zone. Tommy Bergman is in behind his own goal. Swinging it in the corner now to Willie Huber. Huber lost it there to McNabb, moved in, tied him up along the board. Tommy Bergman gets into it. They'll hold it, and the face-off stays in the Detroit end. This is all caused because of the Bruins checking in deep. The Wings not making the play to get by that first wave. Coming soon, Peschke, new great American supersize hot dog. The one that fills the sun at your supermarket. Puck came back toward the line. Here's Rick Smith with a shot. Rutherford grabbed that. He was screened. Played along the boards on the left side for Errol Thompson. Now it's San Leroy. 
San Laurent, J.P. LeBlanc tried to hold up, but went in ahead of the pass over on the left wing. You look at Andre San Laurent. He had a great season when he came to the wings from the Islanders a year ago. Had a little slow start this year, Sid, but he's come on strong. Yes, uh, he is one reason, possibly, you can say, the fact that the wings are winning uh, lately. He is playing so much stronger than he was earlier in the season, as is McCourt and several others. Willie Huber from center ice. Cheever stops that. Brad Park. Trying to turn away from LaPlaw. J.P. fell down and Park heads out with Rattel. Now Rattel playing it in behind the Detroit net. Rutherford cleared it to the corner. Schmatz is there. Huber knocked it, or rather Tommy Bergman knocked it away. But it'll be kept in by Park. Off the side of the net. That's Brad Park digging in after it. It was tipped away from him and coming out San Laurent. Andre San Laurent to center ice. Andre on the move over the line. Fired a shot and Milbury deflected that up into the crowd. And the play will stay just inside the Boston blue line. Well, the Wings and Toronto Maple Leafs renew festivities, hostilities, or what have you, in a game tomorrow afternoon at Olympia. Four o'clock game time. Toronto came out in the game played a couple nights ago at Maple Leaf Garden. Roughed the Wings up a bit, got out in front of the hockey game. Two to nothing, but the Wings came back. Did some roughing of their own and ended up eventually winning it. John Rattel off to the side of the Detroit goal. Rutherford stops it for Hamel. Now Hamel took a bump from Smock, kicked away at the puck, played it to Bolduck. Bolduck moved off the puck by Milbury, who lost his stick again. And Milbury had a pretty good grip on Bolduck. Schmatz and Harper nose to nose. Now Schmatz and Harper having words, and the two linesmen move in very quickly. Milbury and Hamel had a few words, although it was Milbury. Milbury and Bolduck uh, were the ones that were roughing it up. Bolduck wound up with Milbury sick. He was going to play with two there for a moment. Now there's no, uh, Milbury giving Bolduck a pushing the boards and I would imagine these two fellas played together Milbury's a, a boy from this area American boy now from the face off the puck got by Milbury Bolduck digging after it along with Park Bolduck picks it up and then Park covered up on him here's Woods going into the corner after it Paul Woods tried to tip it to Hogabaum Milbury has him all wrapped up the puck came loose but the whistle had stopped the play and the face off will be to the left side of Jerry Cheevers and Don Cherry Makes a quick player change as he sends Cashman out with Jonathan and Miller, Dick Redman, and Gary Dope. And Milbury dropped his stick again. Uh, if he were playing in the days of the late Jack Adams, Jack Adams would be taping that stick to his hand because uh, that's one thing that hockey players are supposed to do, be able to hold on to their stick. You can't do much when you're out there without a hockey stick. Now Detroit again has that four defensemen lineup with Perry Miller and Reed Larson playing up on the wings with Carroll, Huber and Tommy Bergman at the blue line. Dick Redmond. Redmond bringing it out to center A. Cleared it in along the glass. That's Miller going in after it. Rutherford played it away from him. Cleared along the boards on the left side to Perry Miller. Miller played it back of his goal. It goes to the corner with Huber and after it. Willie Huber slid it back of the net again. Tommy Bergman over on the left side. It got away from Miller. Comes out center ice for Gary Dope. Now Redmond. Dick Redmond's pass knocked down by Miller. That's Bob Miller clearing it on the right side. Too far for Cashman. Tommy Bergman's pass went by everybody. And Redmond will come back after it. Dick Redmond clearing it ahead to Miller. Bob Miller of Boston from center ice. A long shot wide of the Detroit goal. Jonathan digging in after it. Rutherford played it away from him. Miller bumped heavily into Reed Larson. Play goes to the opposite side. Cashman and Miller came back to the line. Gary Dope with a shot. The save made. And Rutherford just did knock it away as Cashman was in. Redmond a shot knocked down by Carroll. Carroll cleared it away. There's going to be a Detroit penalty coming up as Tommy Bergman dumped Miller. Out in front of the Detroit goal, and now Boston will have the extra man, and we'll be back with a Bruin power play in just a moment. Parts Plus, the sign of quality parts, competitively priced, plus the kind of service you can count on. Valvoline isn't just for winning races, it's for anybody who wants the best protection possible for their hard-working engine. And now you can treat your car to Valvoline 10W40 all-season motor oil for just 69 cents a quart at your nearest participating Parts Plus Auto Store. 
Look for auto stores displaying this time. Parts Plus for automotive name brand you trust. Bergman. Tommy Bergman picks up the first penalty of the Red Wings. He goes off for hooking at 8.03 of this, the second period. Red Wings lead the hockey game 2-1. Took the lead on a goal by Paul Wood, 3.22 of this second period. Dale McCourt will be out as a penalty killer with Wood. Barry Miller and Reed Larson. Now that's Miller, the puck loose in front, went through Woods, going after this Perry Miller. He and Cashman, and Woods knocked it away. Sends it back into the Boston zone. Dick Redmond comes back after it. Now Redmond being checked, turned around by Woods. Goes in behind his own goal again. 20 seconds of the penalty time gone by as Brad Park clears it ahead to Foster. Dwight Foster over the line. That's Wayne Cashman going into the corner in behind the Detroit goal. It was knocked away, first by Miller, then by Larson. And Dale McCourt bounces it out to center right. Foster at his own blue line now with Brad Park. Park being watched closely by Wood. Now Park playing it ahead to Redmond. Over on the right side to Cashman into the Detroit end. Here's Wayne Cashman in behind the Detroit goal. Now Cashman turning away from Larson's check. The puck loose. Here's Foster with it. Back along the line to Dick Redmond. Redmond with a shot that saved me. And the puck driven into the corner as Rutherford came up with a big one. Now that's Paul Woods lifting it in the air but not out. Kept in by Redmond. Going into the corner off the side of the net is Middleton. And Larson came back to stop that. Woods after the loose puck. And Woods finds the opening. Clears it along the boards on the left side. And it rolls the length of the ice. 35 seconds left in Tommy Bergman's penalty time. The Bruins make a change. Coming out now is Redmond. They have O'Reilly, McNabb, and Marcotte up front. Buck bouncing in behind the Detroit goal. Rutherford cleared it to the corner. Went high in the air. J.P. LeBlanc in along the board. There with O'Reilly. They're kicking away at it. And it came loose to Perry Miller. Here now Reed Larson. Larson jammed off the puck by Marcotte. And LeBlanc digs it out behind his own goal and bounces it down the ice. And five seconds remain in the Detroit penalty as Tommy Bergman is getting set to come back on. He's on. The wings are at full strength. Now Brad Park. Park clearing it to McNabb. Here's McNabb going in with a backhander. It went wide. Puck right out in front. And John Amell was there with San Laurent to clear it out of danger. Still low. The Bruins have it. Now here's Gary Doak. Doak with a shot, and it was LeBlanc that went out and blocked that one, and it's all the way down the ace. Gary Doak, nine and a half minutes to play in the second period. Now the play at the Detroit blue line into the corner. Jimmy Rutherford way out of the goal. Over on the left wing for Errol Thompson. Thompson's pass to Hamel. Hamel a bit off balance, regains it, cleared it to the right side to San Laurent, and Carroll was shoved in ahead of the pass offside. Two to one, Detroit leads. We'll be back with more in just a moment. When you own a trans van, you have to get used to all the room inside, like the carpeted dining area with thick cushioned seats and removable table. The sleeping area has large, comfortable sofa beds covered with stylish fabrics, ample closet space, too, and the stand-up kitchen has an ice box, stainless steel sink, roomy drawers, and plenty of cupboards. The versatile trans van from Champion, Say, maybe your next car shouldn't be a car. See the new trans van at Colonial Dodge and Crestwood Dodge. Don Cherry in behind the Boston bench. He's not been a particularly happy coach recently. He's one for known for his one-liners and what have you, but it's much easier to do when your club is winning all the time, and the Bruins have not been on a losing streak, but they haven't been putting the victories together as they were early in the season. Now John Rattel turning it out to center ice. It came to Schmott. He was stopped by Hamel, and the puck ended up in the Boston bench. Talking about Don Cherry, he had an article uh, supposedly in the paper today where he said that they have to get back to basics. He says they've gotten away from the basic part of hockey, fundamentals, and he says he is working them two and three hour shifts now trying to get them going. Buck flipped right to Jimmy Rutherford. That's Thompson clearing it into the corner to Hamel. Over on the left side to Carroll, back to Hamel. He couldn't get it out, now it's Harper. Dan Leroy dumped it out to center ice. Bruins back after it, Rattel at his own blue line. Eight and a half minutes to play in the second period, two to one Detroit. Here's Harper, 
Laid it off to Errol Thompson over on the right side. Carroll goes digging after it with Rick Smith. Two of them along the board. San Leroy picks it up. Andre San Leroy in behind the Boston goal. San Leroy still in control. Andre San Leroy doing a lot of skating. He tried to work it to Thompson, but that's broken up by Schmutz. Now Bobby Schmutz heading right back. Schmutz bounced it off to the side of the Detroit net, and that puck did take a funny bounce. Cleared by Rutherford to Thompson. Now McCourt, San Leroy. San Leroy missed it at the line. It cleared back to Jolly. Here's Schmutz picking it up. Bobby Schmutz into the Detroit zone, but Secord coming down the left wing and ahead of the play, and it's offside. The carnival life is a tough one, and Joanne Woodward's done enough dancing. A tender affair with a hometown boy changes her life in The Stripper, tonight's 8 o'clock movie on TV 50. Bobby Crum looking on, waving some in, some out. Matter of fact, he is, was going to change lines. The referee isn't going to allow it. So McCourt, Nedimansky, and LeBratton will stay out. They had come out with Miller, Larson, and uh, LeBlanc as a forward line, but John Wensick is on for the first time in the hockey game, playing on the left wing. He's got 28 goals on the season, but he's evidently been in the doghouse a bit. Here's Wensick going in. The play is offside into the Detroit end. I was wondering, Bruce, if he is partially injured. Uh, you, the club, the Boston club, haven't been playing that well, and you would think a 28-goal scorer would warrant being on the ice, but he hasn't made an appearance until just now. Well, he was known as a uh, sort of a brawling sort of a hockey player all of last season. This year, he turned into a goal scorer. But he and Jonathan, two pretty tough cookies, are out there in either wing now. And there's Wensick taking a run at Willie Huber. They was offside. Oh, they called a charging penalty. I thought they'd have to. Well, he didn't last long. Uh, he's going to sit one out. So that's uh, maybe why he hasn't been playing that much. We'll be back with more after we pause now for this. Detroit Standard Dealers Sports Club, giving their support to Greater Detroit and our own Detroit professional team. They may not be pros on skate, but they sure are at offering you quality standard service for your car. What do you say, guys? Come on out and support the Standard Dealers and our team. fact that we're talking that's John Wensick over in the penalty box having a rest he had he just come on and he just made a run at Willie Huber got his elbow and stick up a little high well, mostly his elbow his left elbow up into Willie Huber's face and he'd have to go up fairly high to get Willie Huber but Wicks decided that uh, should give him another rest and put him in the penalty box well I think he played maybe all of about 10 seconds his first appearance on the ice now here is Reed Larson coming out. That's Nedimansky over on the right side to Larson and Marcotte made a good defensive play as he shoved Dale McCord in offside. The Wings are going to have to loosen up this penalty killing unit of Boston. They uh, move their, they keep their defense right up at the blue line and the Wings are trying to stick handle in. They've got to get the puck in deep, hope to get a face off. Milbury sends it back out center ice. It goes all the way back into the Detroit zone. Wensick for charging 12-22. A minute 40 left in the Detroit power play. They lead the hockey game 2-1. to one. They have one power play goal. Here now is Nedimansky. LeBratton up the right side. Here's LeBratton cutting right in. LeBratton took the shot. The save made. It came back to the line and bounced out center ice. Jerry Peters lost his stick, but he stopped LeBratton, who cut right in. Now Nedimansky over the line. Has LeBratton moving again. Danny LeBratton. Here's LeBratton sending it back to Dale McCord in the corner. Now McCord has Larson out in front. It got away from him. That's Redmond going after it. And Dick Redmond picks it up and shoots it down the ice. Little more than a minute remaining in the penalty. And it'll be Middleton who's going to take the puck in the Detroit end. Cleared it in behind the Detroit net. Miller goes after it. 50 seconds left in the penalty as Perry Miller heads out. Now Miller dumping it into the corner, going in after it. Milbury chased by Miller. It goes to the corner, and McCourt has it. Dale McCourt. McCourt turning with it. Send it way beyond Nedimansky. And they're not making use of the point men right now. The wings aren't on the power play, and the Bruins again drive it the length of the ice. A half a minute remaining. In the penalty to Wensick. 
Now Larson. Reed Larson moving his way out to center eight. Here is Larson carrying it over the line. Check right there. It's loose. Kept in by LeBlanc. J.T. LeBlanc with a shot, and that's knocked down in front. Kept in by Miller. Perry Miller hands it off to Larson. Larson lost it out in front, and the Bruins will bring it out. Smith ahead to Miller. Too far for him. The penalty time is all over now, and once he comes back out. And Boston fought off the Detroit power play with LeBratton having far and away the best opportunity. Larson tied up in front of the goal. It's loose and driven wide of the net by Smart. J.P. LeBlanc starts McCord out. Dale McCord turned around by Park. Now McCord at the Detroit line. Here's McCord ahead. LeBlanc tipped it in, goes chasing in after it. He and Rick Smith go into the corner together. And it's Miller, Bob Miller, who digs it loose, kept in by Errol Thompson. The shot by San Laurent broken up. Here's Thompson with it. Errol Thompson dumping it into the corner. And that's Cheever's out of the goal. Willie Huber held it in. Put it out in front of backhand shot. And that's deflected wide as LeBlanc let it go. Errol Thompson. San Laurent tried to center it. He's banged in along the board by Bob Miller. Brad Park was checked by Thompson. Errol Thompson to LeBlanc with a shot. And that went just wide. Just off the side of the net. Pretty play by Thompson. Tommy Bergman flips the shot. Cheever's knocks that down. Now Rick Smith starts out as the Wings had great chances. Play broken up by Bulldog. Danny Bulldog cleared it over to the left side. He and O'Reilly going after it. O'Reilly was hauled down. Now it's Miller with it. O'Reilly really went after San Laurent. Now here coming back is Brad Park off the side of the goal. Goes to the corner, Errol Thompson. He's checked there by O'Reilly. He kneels on the puck and they whistle the play down. Paints off to the left of the Detroit goal. And a milling of players. Game is 2-1 to one Detroit. We'll be back with more in a moment. We're Fred Drendel, Lincoln Mercury. Before anything else, that means we're people who care. The service is everything. Uh, the customer makes a large investment in an automobile, and naturally uh, they expect it to run well at all times, and it really should. So we're geared to this. We know that service is the most important thing in the world to a customer that buys a car. On Oakland near Telegraph in Pontiac. Two, the Boston Bruins won with four minutes and 16 seconds to go in the second period. Hogabaum, Woods, and Bold up the forward line of Detroit. Buck came back to Redmond with a shot. That deflected wide. Bergman goes in after it. On the left side to Bold up. Milbury knocked it away. Here now a chance for McNabb. He shot wide. Marcotte off to O'Reilly. And Hogabaum stopped that. He plays it now to Huber, Willie Huber, dumping it out center ice, and back after it, Dick Redmond. Now Redmond playing it to center ice again. That's O'Reilly clearing it to the Detroit line, and it's cleared back out by Huber, Hogabaum, and Bolduck. Here's Bolduck trying to go through, and he was jumped off the puck, lost his stick. O'Reilly clears it now to Marcotte on the left wing. Marcotte, now McNabb. McNabb turned around by Huber, Milbury held it in. Tommy Bergman tipped it to the corner. McNabb went in after it with Hogabaum. Now, Tommy Bergman, it's loose to O'Reilly. O'Reilly clearing it to the point, but Redmond has come way up, and it flies all the way back into the Boston end. Dick Redmond moving in behind his own goal. Now, Redmond starts out with a pass to Milbury and ahead to O'Reilly. O'Reilly shooting it deep into the destroyed end and back after it, Hogabaum. Laid it on the right wing. Bolduck checked right there by O'Reilly. Hogabaum bumps into him. Harper gets into it. That buck dug loose by O'Reilly. He just never quits working. They go down off to the side of the net. Hogabaum trying to get it loose. Tony Bergman has O'Reilly pretty well held. They're going to keep a face off to the right side of the Detroit net. Jane Fonda, John Travolta, Diane Carroll, or rather Cannon, Robin... Williams of Mork and Mindy and a whole galaxy of stars coming your way. The Golden Globe Award telecast Tuesday night at 10, TV 50. You hit the nail on the head when you talked about O'Reilly. He just keeps digging, digging, digging. He's a little put out the fact that Tommy Bergman has his arms around him. He's down his hands and knees. and He threw a couple of elbows back, but didn't do any good. Here's Rick Smith with a shot, and Rutherford knocked it away. Loose in front, and Foster was stopped by Rutherford. Now coming out, Nedimansky, LeBratton on the left side. And LeBratton went in, so Nedimansky had to pull up. Good quick reflex by Nedimansky. McCourt has LeBratton over the line around Rick Smith. Here's Danny LeBratton. He centered it. 
And Jonathan stopped that. Now the Pratton. He pinned along the board. Harper put it out in front. Dope sent it to the side. And it'll be taken now by Foster. The Bruins move it out. Here's Foster clearing it into the corner. Rutherford out of the goal. Hands it off to Nedimensky. Ned pulled away from Cashman's check. It's loose in the corner to Foster. Harper has him covered. Here, though, is Cashman with it. Hamel gave him a bump. They hold the puck in along the boards, and Foster is really swinging away at Terry Harper. And a little bit chippy. Harper has that certain knack of really aggravating or antagonizing, if you will. Well, Bruce, he appears as though he's not going to get there to do the job, but Terry Harper must have real strong forearm because he gets his arms out and he seems to be able to tie people up. He gets the stick down. He plays pucks off his feet very well. He just seems to get the players all mixed up trying to make plays in the corners, and, uh, of course, that's very, very valuable for the wing. Score is 2-1 to one Detroit. We have two minutes to play here in the second period. Play in the Red Wing zone. Dan LaRaw cleared it beyond Redmond down the ice, and again they wave off the icing. So Redmond will come back after it, going in behind Jerry Cheevers. Jonathan opened the scoring, 426 of the first period. Thompson got that one back on a power play. In the early moments of the second period, Paul Woods knocking in a rebound. Rutherford cleared it to the corner. Jonathan held it in there. Off to Cashman, and Rutherford knocked that away. Harold Thompson. Thompson took a bump from Cashman. Buck is locked to the board. Thompson kicking away at it. Didn't get it out. Now Foster trying to pull away from Reed Larson. Here is Foster with it. Back toward the line. It came to Redmond. Redmond cleared it to Foster again. Off the side of the circle. It bounced out in front to Jonathan. And his centering pass stopped by Errol Thompson. San Laurent. Now San Laurent playing it along the boards. In behind the Boston goal. Cleared out on the left side to Jonathan. He dropped it for Park. We have a minute to play in the second period. Buck was knocked down right at the line. Reed Larson was turned around. Here now is Brad Park. His shot blocked by Terry Miller. Park was knocked down and into the board. Cashman took a run. Miss Miller in the wing sends three men out. J.P. LeBlanc ahead to San Laurent. San Laurent got it to the line. Dumped it over the line. It came back out center ice. Andre San Laurent still works with it. He bounced it off to Cheevers, and Jerry Cheevers almost skated it out center ice. Rick Middleton. Middleton's pass tipped in by Jonathan. Jonathan heads to the corner. Put it out in front, and it's Bulldog who comes up with it. Now Danny Bulldog, Woods, Miller. Over the line, Woods. Here's Paul Woods. Woods drops it back for Reed Larson with a shot. Cheevers made the save, and he made a good move to get to it. The Bruins start out. Middleton and Raquel. Here's Middleton putting it right out in front and it wide. Miller goes into the corner. Back on the line. Gary Doak with a shot knocked down. And this period is over as the siren goes. And a good solid period of action in which the wind score the only goal. And we have played now two periods of hockey with the score. The Detroit Red Wings two and the Boston Bruins one. And the end of the second period will be back to the Boston Garden in just a moment. hundreds of dollars if you could buy diamonds direct from the cutters. Well, now you can. Buy direct from the New York Diamond Cutting Company, the Diamond Cutters, and save up to 60% on your diamond. Now a 1.7 carat brilliant cut diamond is just $1,395. Save at the New York Diamond Cutting Company. Call today. Call our Southfield sales office now for your appointment. One hour of your time could save you hundreds of dollars. The great search for a bigger, better hot dog is over because Pesky has it. Pesky's Great American Hot Dog bursts with flavor. Flavor that actually won an independent taste test by almost two to one. In regular or a new supersize that really fills up the bun. 
So go to your supermarket and say, I won't take anything less than the Great American Hot Dog. Great American. I think we have a transmission problem here. <laughs> You pilot, At Amco, we'll put you and your car back together again. We test drive your car with you in it. We examine the pan with you watching so you know the job we recommend is the right one. At Amco, we'll put you and your car back together again. I got you a new set of keys. And so said Abel, we have played two periods of hockey here at the Boston Garden. Paul was knocking in a rebound, the only goal scored. And the game, 2-1 to one Detroit. And in that second period, and again, I guess it would indicate a checking uh, sort of a hockey game. Each team had but six shots on goal. So after two periods, the Wings 11 and Boston 12. It's been that type of a game, Bruce. A lot of close checking. Boston, I thought the Wings played better in the second period. They could have maybe put this game out of reach when Wensick took the penalty. Danny LeBratton broke in. Cheevers made a big save on him. And shortly after that, Boulder had a chance. And... Uh, or a J.P. LeBlanc, I missed. Yep. he missed on a shot that Cheevers never saw at all and just went by the open corner. The next goal is going to be a big goal in this hockey game because it appears as though it is a checking game. But I'll tell you what, like we talked about in the first intermission, it, uh, it seems to me that if a team can hold their own for the first period or two here in the Boston Gardens, uh, despite the fact that Boston does play a physical sort of a game, you do adapt to the smaller right service and uh, the tempo of the game and... And to me, the longer a team holds on here, the better chance they have. Well, there's no doubt the longer they yeah, well, hold yeah. on. Uh, Bruce, it hasn't been what you'd call a real solid hockey game. The checking has been close. I think the wing defense and the wing forwards on plays when Boston have been in deep, they try to make plays out in front of the net, and the wings have been knocking pucks away from the danger zone to keep Boston from actually getting any dangerous shots. In the meantime, the Wings haven't been in the Boston area that often, but when they do get in, they have had some pretty good scoring chances. Well, unless Boston shows me something far different in the third period of this hockey game, uh, Sid, I am going to have to go back to the comments that you and Bob Wilson had in the first intermission. And what you and I talked about, too, is the fact that the Bruins do not look to me to be what I could call a real Stanley Cup contender. No, they don't to me either, and I don't know just trying to analyze what they're doing wrong. They seem to be forechecking, especially uh, O'Reilly and uh, McNabb and those fellows. Cashman, of course, works in the corners. Jonathan is trying to put a lot of strength into their game up front, but they're not finishing near the net for some reason or other, and uh, even though they seem to have the play most of the time, they haven't been dangerous. Jimmy Rutherford hasn't really had to make key no, saves. Right. He made the one play when he got out of the net and then finally scrambled and got a hold of the puck when I think it was Cashman tried to put it in the empty net. But other than that, it hasn't been a goaltender's game. Well, I am kind of looking forward to a game tomorrow afternoon. It's going to be played at Olympia Stadium because the Wings in Toronto played a very physical game last time out a couple nights ago. Wings came from behind to win it. They brought in a couple of pretty strong kids and John Hillworth and Steve Short out of the Kansas City team, and they incidentally have gone back to the Kansas City Club, the Wings' number one uh, minor league affiliate. But Detroit handed uh, Toronto bump for bump and then ended up outscoring them, and it was a heck of a hockey game. Well, that was at Maple Leaf Gardens, and I am sure the Leafs are going to come into Olympia tomorrow with fire in the eye. Well, we'll have a good hockey game back to the Olympia tomorrow, and I just hope that the Wings are skating the way we know they can skate. There again, the speed of LeBratton and Boldick and uh, Paul Woods, Hogabaum, the outside route against Toronto because Toronto defense have problems closing them off. They try to play wide, and if they play real wide, then you have fellows like Dale McCourt, Nedimansky, and them that can pass through the middle. So they are the ones that, uh, no doubt, yep. Toronto are fighting for a playoff spot. Well, that's tomorrow afternoon at Olympia. The business at hand here is at the Boston Gardens, where the Wings lead the Bruins by a score of 2-1. to one. Well, an old friend of ours and a guy that you're very familiar with, Bud Lynch, will be joining Sid Abel from here at our telecast location. But before we get to Bud, let's hear this. How does the Bank of the Commonwealth help me? Well, I got my checking and my savings there. But more important, when I need help, they really understand me. I mean, this guy here, he's studying law. And this bum, oh, he's into medicine. I mean... Every old man wants his kid to do better than he did. So, between my back and my bank, my kid's got a future. 
Hey, Doc. Start operating. Trying hardest to help. That's the Bank of the Commonwealth. My son, the judge. Going up that hill. No way. Off-road is fun, but sometimes you run into an obstacle that only a true four-wheel drive vehicle can handle. A Jeep CJ will give it a try. The Jeep CJ, built rugged, tough, and tailor-made for terrain like this. It's easy to see the Jeep CJ was born and bred for four-wheeling. And there's even options like automatic transmission and a hard top. Top that. That was fun. The Jeep CJ. <laughs> we wrote the book on four-wheel drive. It seems everyone's talking about energy these days. And all the talk should be a reminder to think energy conservation as you drive. So there'll be more fuel for everyone. The people who make Amoco gasoline ask you to remember this. Good driving habits can squeeze extra mileage out of every gallon of Amoco gasoline. That'll keep you going a bit longer and America's energy going a bit further. And that's good going. Looks like old times, you know, having Bud come up and join. You used to always hold the mic, put the questions to me, and then kind of just see if you could stump me. Now, I'm going to ask you something. Now, just a minute, Sid. I think I broke two young fellows in. They're doing a great job this year. I've even got Bruce Martin smoking cigars. He's bumming them, though. That's right. And uh, you're doing an excellent job. Now, what's the first question? Now, I, uh, let's just talk for a minute about this game. You haven't traveled with the team that often, bud. You were in Montreal a couple of weeks ago to see the Wings win one of the few occasions that they won up in the, in, in the forum. Here they are now with 20 minutes to go, and they have a 2-1 lead. Can they hang on? Well, you know, the month of March, and that was that first Saturday in March when uh, Rutherford came up with a sensational night uh, against the Canadians right in the forum. And uh, let your question just a minute. And then we went flat again, if you recall, against the same Boston club in Detroit and Minnesota. But then we caught fire, and uh, there's a looseness there and a togetherness. And uh, it's obvious that the players that can put the puck in that are doing that very thing. As for a lead here in Boston, we've covered too many games, Bruce and I, through the year. You've seen a lot back at the players' bench. This third period in this town is tough. Uh, three goal lead doesn't hold up. So I would hope that uh, if Boston scores, we score twice. Well, that's, that's very, very nice. But the overall picture, though, don't you feel that the wing team as a whole, defense from the goal out, have really improved their game in the last month or so? I think, honestly, if, if you watch a Red Wing practice, and you've watched them for two years under Bobby Crum's style of teaching, Billy Day is on the ice with him as well in practice, Crum has some fundamental thoughts about the game, and obviously his track record tells that they do pay off. And he has to have skaters, and he's got them. And I think, as you, as you said, though, the last part of the season, this club is doing, I think, what A, the coach and the general manager said, Lindsay wants this club to do. Everybody's doing his job. Right. Bud, I want to talk about the possible merger, but first of all, let's just straighten out, what are your current duties for the Red Wings? You know, a lot of people are probably saying, well, what does Bud Lynch do? Answer the phone when you guys are on the road. Explain where uh, Sid and Bruce are hiding. No, no. <laughs> Actually, uh, Al Coates handles uh, publicity and promotion. My designated title is public relations. And uh, with the girls in the office as well, it's uh, a 24-hour day job because the media people are always calling you, looking for information, news stories on what's happening to Detroit players, personnel, and officers. And uh, I've always said the role of a public relations individual in any sport is selling the product. Uh, it's human relations, too. And here in the Detroit market, we know full well Ted Lindsay and Prom have done a selling job this far, and the players that wear the jerseys, of course. And the crowd coming out with a team that actually is battling to get out of the basement right now. We're building for the future, and that new building that's going to be open by next uh, October, hopefully now, will mean very well that the younger hockey fan will get a chance to get his money worth when he comes to see a Red Wing team, as it did in your day. Right. And you know, you haven't lost any of your Mike uh, Jive at all. You just go and go. I enjoy talking to people like you because I can sit back and just say, way to carry the ball, bud. Sid, I told you years ago, just wind the guy up. That's what Bruce and I always had to do with, with ex-athletes anyway. Well, I have my problems with Martin now, you know. Listen, bud, let's talk a minute about the merger. You know, there is a report that the National League are allowing four clubs in, but the World Hockey Clubs have not, as of yet, accepted the, the entryway. And I think the Players Association has to get into it somewhere, too. The, uh, the, the talk here in Boston, uh, of course, they didn't want New England in, period. Right. But New England was one of the four WHA teams, WHA teams that was accepted by the, the governors of the National Hockey League. And uh, the one story is that the New England team will be in our division 
Washington will take an out. So uh, looking ahead, number nine, Gordy Howe might be playing in the new building if he's still with the Whalers next year. Do you think that Gordy Howe would try and play another year if, the, if there is a merger? I haven't talked to Colleen yet, uh, <laughs> Sid, but uh, I would think that if the two boys stay with the Whalers, and it's going to be interesting how the draft goes, the interleague draft now will be WHA NHL, that'll be real interesting. Right. Now, and the fact that the merger is going to go through, I would think. The three Canadian clubs, uh, I thought possibly they'd have a division where mostly Canadian clubs and then realign the American clubs, but it doesn't appear that way. In the paper, uh, the alignment looks weird right now, but it'll be up to the two leagues when they get together and have, uh, and the schedule makers are going to have a lot of fun. Brian O'Neill must be sweating it out in Montreal already. You know, your buddy, Bruce Martin, hasn't aligned, but he uh, couldn't sleep last night and he wound up putting the 21 teams in divisions. I don't know how he does things well, like this. Well, it's too logical. It won't be that way. You know that. Sid, I want to thank you very much for coming on our telecast from the Boston Garden this afternoon. And Bruce Martin and I will look forward to seeing you uh, on the next telecast. Try to join us in the TV booth, will you? Beautiful. Thank you, bud, ever so much for stopping by. Now, let's go back to Bruce Martin. Okay, Sid Abel, like gold times, but then that's good. Many of our guests receive a $100 gift certificate from Cousins Clothiers, where Fit has been foremost for over 50 years. Well, here at the Boston Gardens, after two periods of play, the score the Detroit Red Wings 2 and the Boston Bruins 1 will be ready for the start of the third period in just a moment. The new trans van by Champion is shorter than this car, has more room than this van, and costs less than this station wagon. Yet this trans van sleeps up to four and oh, even right. includes a kitchen. Lunch is ready. Oh, terrific. John, presenting the Traffic Jam Burger. The amazing new trans van by Champion. Maybe your next car shouldn't be a car. See the new trans van at Sterling Heights Motors and South Point Dodge. sign of quality parts, competitively priced, plus the kind of service you can count on. Protect your car from rain, sun, snow, detergent, and road grime with Turtle Extra Liquid for the hardest wax job ever from Turtle Wax. Now just $3.79 for a 16-ounce bottle at your nearest participating Part Plus Auto Store. Look for Auto Stores displaying this sign, Parts Plus, for automotive name brands you trust. You can see a busy sheet of ice here in the Boston Garden as the Bruins are just now coming out. The Red Wings having been out for a moment or so. Jimmy Rutherford will be defending the goal off to our right. And Jerry Cheevers in the goal to our left to get the third period underway. Rutherford has made 11 stops in the game thus far. The 12 fired in his direction by Boston. And Jerry Cheevers in the Boston goal has stopped nine of the Red Wing 11 shots, and Detroit thus leads it by a score of two to one. So we look forward to what could be a, a pretty good 20 minutes of hockey still to come in this one, Sid. No matter where we go, we have people from uh, Detroit stop by and want to say hello. Jackie DeWolf from Royal Oak wants to say hello to Karen and Joyce and Mark and Dolores and several others. Paul and Chris Kenzie from Canton are here, and Bob Wilkerson from Redford, Craig and Larry Wadecki from Detroit, and Mike Mor Morrow and Andy Georgeson, uh, they're BC students, but they want to say hello to all their friends in Detroit. They're Red Wing fans. Very good. So again, we have Miller and Larson on either side of Greg Carroll, the forward line of the wings. 
Wayne Cashman and Stan Jonathan centered by Foster. Wearing number 27 for the Boston Bruins. We've had a total of five penalties in the hockey game. Four of them for the Bruins, one to Detroit. Willie Huber and Tommy Bergman are back along the Red Wing defense. Bit of a delay prior to the start of the uh, period. Now here we go. Face off one by Foster. This is dope. Handing it off to Smith. Smith scooping it into the Detroit zone and Rutherford stops it in behind the net. Cleared it over on the left side. It didn't come through. Here's Cashman into the corner after it. He was checked by Carroll. Puck hit the back of the net. Tommy Bergman cleared it to the other corner. Now Reed Larson's pass bounces ahead. Carroll will pick it up. Here's Greg Carroll playing it over the line. It went between the skates of Dope. And that's Smith in after it. Rick Smith over on the left side to Jonathan. It's picked up instead by Cashman. He dropped it back to Jonathan. Shooting it in behind the Detroit goal. Jimmy Rutherford sent it into the corner. Cashman went in after it. This is Foster. Dwight Foster. He played it away from Rick Smith who was cutting in. And the pass went all the way back down the ice. Boy, those Montreal Canadiens continue to have their problems. They're at home to Washington today, and the Capitals and Montreal are tied 1-1 in the first period. Reed Larson. Now Larson ahead to Willie Huber to Perry Miller. Hogabaum on the left side. Back to Miller. Miller played it back to Hogabaum. He went in behind the net, and that was knocked away by Brad Park. Buckton all the way down the ice. They wave off the icing again, so John Amell. Cleared it on the right wing to Bolduck. Bolduck sent it back to Hamel. His pass broken up by O'Reilly. Here's O'Reilly playing it out to Park. Park took a weak shot, and it was Huber that knocked that away. Hogabom didn't get it out. It was kept in. Going after it, Paul Woods, and sliding along the ice, he passed it back into the Boston end with Milbury back after it. Now here's a pass coming to O'Reilly, back into the Detroit zone. O'Reilly and Harper... Two of them go in along the boards, and Harper tied his man up. Hogabom had trouble with it. Amell swept it into the corner, left there by Marcotte. Now Sean Amell trying to get loose, couldn't do it. Then McNabb was spun around. Harper went in, tied O'Reilly up again. Now coming out is Bolduck. O'Reilly and Harper way down the ice, and O'Reilly really gave Harper a whack on the back of the head, but away away from the play. Billy Hogabon takes a bump from O'Reilly, who starts to throw his weight around. Now McNabb centering pass. Amell was there to stop that. Here's O'Reilly. Off the side of the net to McNabb. In behind the goal. O'Reilly being chased by Harper. Buck left right there along the board. Marcotte dug it out. Now it's Rutherford who cleared it to the corner. Paul Woods went in with O'Reilly. Buck held in. McNabb in the corner. He's checked there by Hamel. And the whistle stops the play. Face off to the left of the Detroit goal. And the Bruins with that four checking particularly of O'Reilly. In and around the Detroit end. They're doing all the work in the corners and, and controlling the play in the corners, but they haven't been able to get the puck out into a scoring area too often. The wings are being quite careful about plays that are made out in front of the Jimmy Rutherford, and the defense have seemed able to clear things. John Hamel, I like to mention John Hamel because he comes to play, and when he goes in the corner, whether it's with uh, McNabb or Riley or whoever it is, he gives it his all and knocks people off the puck. Rutherford drops it in behind his goal to Perry Miller. Knocked away. Here's Rattel back on the line to Rick Smith with a shot. Knocked down by Miller. Came right back to Smith. He fired another one. And that's deflected all the way back into the Boston zone. Gary Dope going back after it. Then right to Cheevers who hands it off to Dope. Now he's played three minutes of the third period. Two to one Detroit. This is Rick Smith. Out at center ice. Rattel knocked it down. Then took it away from Larson again. Into the Detroit zone. Danny LeBratton and Rattel bump in along the boards. They go into the corner. It's dug away by Middleton. Here's Middleton, a backhand shot for went wide. Middleton goes after it. Now it's Middleton trying to turn away from Larson. That puck loops out in front. They score! Running right in and was Secord, who picked it up out in front of Jimmy Rutherford and slammed it home to tie the hockey game. Well, between Middleton and Rattel, they kept possession. Middleton tried to, Rattel tried to poke it in. The rebound come off Jimmy Rutherford. And he put it up high. Rattel just fought with Miller. And uh, while Miller had him pretty well off balance, he did make a feeble shot. It came in. Rutherford made the save on that. Secor picked up the rebound, put it upstairs. 
tie this game at 2-2. But it was the four checking that caused all the problems. Secord gets his 13th of the season at 3 minutes and 23 seconds of this, the third period. Now this is Stan Jonathan going to the corner. Cashman in behind the goal. Larson knocked the first pass away. It went in behind the net. Jonathan in after it. Stan Jonathan sent it in the corner for Foster. Now Dwight Foster. He was turned away from the puck, but Jonathan held it into Cashman, who shot it wide. That's Milbury holding it in. Cashman goes chasing after it again. It'll be taken instead by Brad Park. Here's Park. Now it's the Bruins are carrying the play. Park lost it. Miller just too far for Nedimanski, who was heading down the line. And the play goes back over two lines and offside. It was Middleton, along with Cashman, who drew the assist. We'll be back in just a moment. Brown Concord's getting a ticket. Concord. Brown Concord. Why is American Motors Concord such a success? Value. Because the AMC Concord DL is a compact that comes with its luxury extras at no extra charge. Luxuries like a Landau roof, crushed velour seats, digital clock, and a smooth, quiet ride. He's kidding. It's not a brown Concord. It's red. 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 1979 AMC Concord, the new American success story. And we are with you once more from here at the Boston Gardens. The game tied at 2-2. Here's Dick Redman. His pass broken up by Thompson. Thompson had trouble with it. Goes back after it. That's O'Reilly, number 24, along with Greg Jolly, also number 24 of the wings. And the play stopped. Face off to the left of the Detroit goal. So I guess I misunderstood the assist, Sid. Well, I know Rattel got an assist on the play. Secor scored the goal. And uh, I don't know the second one. It could have been Cashman. Uh, it could have been Middleton. I think it was Middleton. Right. Uh, it was Rattel's 700, uh, if I heard that right. Uh, career assist. That's an awful one. A lot of points. Face off will be to the left of the Detroit goal. So Secord from Middleton and Rattel at 323. Now the wings, J.P. LeBlanc, had it skipped by him. Back to the Boston line is Smith. Dick Redmond. Redmond turning away from San LaRoz check. Now brings it out to center eight. He dumped it into the corner, goes digging in after it. Thompson is there. Errol Thompson playing it to J.P. LeBlanc. He starts Willie Huber out. Huber coming out center ice. Long pass on the left side. San Leroy, Greg Jolly went through him. Now O'Reilly turns back for Boston. Gary O'Reilly over the line, hands it off to Miller, right out in front. He scores! Marcott wide open. And now it is a 3-2 hockey game. Marcott was knocked down by Huber, and now O'Reilly is going after Huber, and the two of them go down on the ice. Marcott was decked by Huber after he scored the goal, and then O'Reilly went ripping after Huber. But Boston has taken a 3-2 lead on the goal by Don Marcott. Five minutes, 23 seconds will be the time of the go-ahead goal for Boston. I don't know if Boston have made a line change or someone come on the ice, but I count six Boston players down around the uh, Detroit net with their goaltender. They could have had too many men on the ice. They have right now. This is a play where Miller made the play across the front. Marcotte just dug it up deep as Huber came back and knocked him down. Then O'Reilly come after Huber. Huber drops his gloves, and these are two pretty strong boys going to go after one another. Boston had too many men on the ice, but uh, it wasn't noticed by the referee. The puck was just dished up from in close. He just picked it up and put it in. It all started with one of the de Detroit defensemen caught out of position because Errol Thompson was back in the blue line when the rush started coming up to the center right. Good shot of Willie Huber in the penalty box. So Don Marcotte, who's put Boston out in front, will be back right after we pause now for this message. It's special. Ah, that looks really nice and cool. It's special. Uh -huh. It's the best It's refreshing. Special. I can tell you, it's um, it's got a Labatt's taste. Yeah. Special. 
it's a real Canadian taste. Has it got body? That's it. It's got body. It's fresh in the heart. Tastes the best fresh in the And yet it has less than 99 calories in a bottle. It's fresh in the heart. Tastes the best fresh in the each team is short a man now as Huber of Detroit, O'Reilly of Boston off for roughing at 523. The goal by Marcotte is 17th of the year from Miller and O'Reilly at 523. And here's Rattel going in, a penalty coming up to Detroit. There'll be a hooking call and Errol Thompson offers no argument as he heads over to the Detroit bench. So now the Wings will play two men short. Well, that was a good penalty by Errol Thompson. The uh, wing defense, that's on Reed Larson's side, played that awful loose. Rattel took a wide pass, and he had clear sailing. Thompson hooked him up under the arm, stopped him from getting his shot away. Jimmy Rutherford just smothered the puck when it slid into the goal crease. But the wings have been sitting back, and they're reeling. Uh, Boston haven't changed their game. I think they're trying to be maybe a little more physical than they were in the second period. Well, I think the difference is that in the game, the way fellas, as we mentioned before, like Cashman and Marcotte and O'Reilly, just Working dig into corners points. and come out with the puck. I think Boston, I don't know, I'd like to see another replay. I think Boston got away with something when they scored their, their goal, a Secor goal, because it appeared as though they had one too many men on the ice. Here now, Brad Park with a shot, and Rutherford kicks it away. Dale McCord picks it up and shoots it down the ice. So Thompson for hooking at 539. Still a minute, little over a minute and a half in Huber and O'Reilly's penalty time. So Boston one man short and the Wings two men short. Dale McCourt, the only Detroit forward. This is Rattel over the line. Brad Park dumps it into the corner. Rattel, the opposite corner to Middleton. Now Rick Middleton turning away from McCourt's check. Middleton bringing it right out and shot it over the top of the goal. Rattel handed it back to the blue line for Brad Park. Now here's Rattel again in the circle, going to the corner. Harper chasing him in behind the net. Harper turned him around, takes it into the corner. And Rattel lost his stick, kicking away at it. Harper got it, rather, it's taken loose by Middleton. Here's Brad Park. And his centering pass didn't get through. Tommy Bergman and McCourt combined to shoot it back down the ace. 45 seconds left in Huber and O'Reilly's penalty. Digging over the line, that hard shot by Dick Redmond. Rutherford stopped that, and he himself shoots it out center eight. Now Rattel moving back in. Here's Park. Park with a shot to save it on the rebound. Middleton shot it wide. Harper brings it out. And Jimmy Rutherford came up with a big move. Buck fired all the way back in, and Rutherford himself again shoots it down the ace. Fifteen seconds left in O'Reilly and Huber's penalty. Foster. He's checked by Terry Harper. Paul Woods has it. And Woods handed it off to Miller. And Miller took a golf at it. Didn't get it out. Now Brad Park hands it off to Dick Redmond. Redmond at the blue line. Redmond back to Park with a shot. Rutherford to save on the rebound. And again Rutherford jumps on the puck in front of the goal on a shot by Foster. Well, I've been given a score, three. I don't believe. Michigan State 33, Pennsylvania 8. End of the first half. Talk so. about goaltending. Jimmy Rutherford makes a big save there. The rebound comes over, and the puck was going to go over on the open side. Jimmy had his left his goal stick down on the short, on the long side, and he makes the save with his goal stick on a play that looked, appeared as though it was going to go in the corner, but he's made four or five big saves here while the Wings have been floundering early in the third period. Huber on Riley's penalty time has gone by. The Wings one man short now, and Boston at full strength. That's Foster. Now it's Cashman again. Wayne Cashman trying to center it. He did. Foster scores. Foster cut right out in front of the court and banged it in. And now it's four to two. And it's not a power play goal. It came one second after Thompson's penalty time was up. This is a little bit of a lucky goal here. Uh, Cashman makes a. A play out in the front. Foster gets a piece of the puck, and how it got over Jimmy's arm, I don't know. It was on the short side. Jimmy is tight to the post right there while he's reaching, but he must have given away a little bit to go down on his hands and knees, and it went in the short side. Time of the goal, 7.40. Thompson was due back at 7.39. So it's not a power Thompson play goal. By number 27, Dwight Foster. Assisted by number 12, Wayne Cashman. 
and number 22, Grant Park. Park, along with Cashman, draw the assist on the goal. An icing call against the Bruins. Four to two now. Boston has taken the lead. We'll be back in a moment. From Cashman and Park. See your local TV book for a free pizza coupon. Well, the Boston Bruins are erupting for three goals here before the eight-minute mark of the third period and have taken a two-goal lead. That's Reed Larson, his shot knocked away. Cheevers came in, cleared it to the corner. Danny LeBratton and Doak had each other all tied up. Here now is Doak playing it to Smith. Out at center ice, down the right side, Cashman over two lines and offside. And they'll bring the face off back inside the Boston blue line. And Bruce, they were all typical Boston goals, uh, digging in the corners, moving the puck out, and from appears to be like bad angles and slashing out in front of the net to uh, wind up eventually putting it behind Jimmy Rutherford. So the way things have been going, the Wings can still get themselves back into it, but they need one here in a hurry. Dale McCourt in against Bob Miller. Buck came out center ice. Sean Amell shoots it right back in. Cheevers leaves it in behind his own goal for Dick Redman. And now Redman turns out on the left side ahead to Milbury. Milbury from center ice playing it in behind the Detroit net. Rutherford left it there for Reed Larson. Larson ahead to Dale McCourt. LeBratton down the left side, but McCourt got it right into Redman, and Redman will bring it back. Now O'Reilly. O'Reilly and Redman over the line. O'Reilly turning away. LeBratton took it away from him. Here's McCourt. He just failed to get loose. LeBratton has it. LeBratton over on the right side. Cutting in was Larson, but breaking that up was O'Reilly. Now Redman will shoot at the length of the ice, and there'll be an icing call as Larson goes back after it. And the play will come back into the Boston zone. Super 6 Tire Centers brings you moments to remember. Three brothers all played forward for the Detroit Red Wings. Said who are they? Oh, the three kill rays, Heck, Wally, and Kenny. Uh, the last one uh, was Kenny, I know. Uh, played for, they started in 1931 and played through the 44 season. So the Kilray brothers. Now the play comes out to center ice over on the left side, Secord. Dumping it deep into the Detroit, and Rutherford cleared it away from Middleton. It's bounced toward the blue line, San Leroy. Had it tipped away from him by Rattel. Tommy Bergman covered up on him. Andre San Leroy turning out. San Leroy, he's checked by Middleton. Now Middleton starts over the line. Huber slowed him up. Andre San Leroy playing it off the glass. Tommy Bergman took a bump from Rattel. Rutherford cleared it to the corner, but Rattel will hold it there. And Middleton had broken his stick. Actually, it's lodged in one of the cracks on the board. And here's J.P. LeBlanc coming back. Left side pass. Thompson steers it in to the Boston zone. Smith goes in after it. Now Smith lifted it down the ice again. Tommy Bergman being chased by two of the Bruins. Fires it over on the left side. Errol Thompson off his skate. Picked up by San Leroy. San Leroy at center ice. Good move away from Foster. And then he was checked at the line by Milbury. Milbury chases them all the way back into the Detroit zone. So San Leroy covers him and Huber starts out. Left side pass for Thompson. Got LeBlanc on the right. Thompson a long shot. Cheever stops at Redmond. Now nine minutes, 35 seconds to go in the hockey game. The Bruins have opened up a two-goal lead. Rutherford came out of the net, cleared it to the corner, but Foster has it there. Play broken up by Harper, but Harper put it right on the stick of Cashman out in front, and that's stopped by Greg Jolly. Buck came out center ice. Milbury has it there, cleared it back into his own zone, and Dick Redmond hands it off now to Foster. Billy Hogabaum bothering him, and Milbury will turn it. Now Mike Milbury shooting it in behind the Detroit goal. Jimmy Rutherford was checked back of the net. Covering up was Jolly. Greg Jolly's pass kicked out center ice. Hogabaum couldn't get loose. Redmond stopped that. Now Jonathan a long shot. Rutherford laid it off on the left side for Paul Wood. 8.50 to go. 4-2 to two Boston. Here's Bolduck. A long shot from center ice. Cheever stops that easily. 
And Rick Smith picks it up, shoots it back down the ice, and again there'll be an icing call as Jolly's back to touch it. So with a score four to two, Boston, we shall be back in just a moment. Isn't it incredible how your tableware seems to disappear? No matter how often you replace it, there's never enough to match or go around. Now at Bank of the Commonwealth, when you put money into your savings, you can put Oneida Stamus on your table. So you collect Oneida, and your money collects interest. Trying hardest to help. That's the Bank of the Commonwealth. Deposit this at the bank, Beecham. We'll need another place setting for the ambassador. Yes, madam. Montreal scoring three goals, just a little more than four minutes apart. Coming from a two-to-one deficit to go out in front of this hockey game, four to two. Boston. What did I say? <laughs> oh, oh, well, Montreal I was through. looking at the Montreal. No, I was too, and I was going to say, I didn't realize Montreal had scored all those goals. Now here's Reed Larson's pass. No, Montreal and Washington are still in a 1-1 tie. Game being played at the Forum. Play went into the Detroit end, way offside. And they'll come out center right. I was just looking, Lafleur has scored a power play goal for Montreal that brought them back into the tie. Paul Mulvey scored earlier in the hockey game to give Washington a 1-0 lead. And just with about three minutes left in the first half, according to our report, it's hard to believe that in NCAA semifinals the team could be that far ahead, but we show Michigan State at 40, 10 at 8. It doesn't seem possible, but I uh, hope, hope that it's the right score. <laughs> if the Red Wings are going to get back in this game, Bruce, they're going to have to get into the Boston zone and cause Boston some problems. They're, they're just letting Boston move in too deep. They've moved their defensemen up beyond center ice. They're just controlling the play deep in Detroit zone. Here's O'Reilly digging it loose. O'Reilly was knocked down. The play goes to the corner. Into the opposite corner after it is Hogabom. Billy Hogabom bounces the line. Not out. Reed Larson just got up. Picks it up and moves out. Being checked by O'Reilly. Larson's over the line. Trying to go through, but didn't do it. Smith's pass broken up, though. Here's Bulldog. His pass missed Hogabom, and he was decked by Gary Doak. Gary Doak caught Hogabom on the blind side and really leveled him. Now a pass over two lines, picked up by Hogabom. It's offside. Billy Hogabom will take a look after getting hit like that. He's just returning to the lineup. Doak come out. Hogabom wasn't paying any attention to Doak at all. Well, our guests on the telecast receive a gift certificate for a pair of Clark shoes or boots from Sherman Shoe Stores in Birmingham, Somerset Mall, Fair Lane and Lakeside Centers, and 12 Oaks Snowby. McCord in against Rattel. McCord wins the faceoff. Tony Bergman hands it off to Huber. Now Willie Huber and Bergman move out. Huber laying it into the corner. It went to the side of the net. Milbury of the Bruins goes in after it. Mike Milbury's pass skips all the way back into the Detroit zone. Tony Bergman has to hustle back after it. Took a wild slap at it and got away with it. Nedemanski's pass to Dale McCourt. McCourt has LeBratton over the line, and then McCourt went in just ahead of the puck offside. And they'll bring it out over the Boston line, and we shall be back with more after we pause now for this. Can I offer you a Coke, sir? No. Uh, seven up, some coffee? No. Something a little stronger? No. I'd rather Werner's. <laughs> no matter what else you got, don't get caught with your Werner's down. Wherever you're going, it's nice to know Werner's is there. Nothing can replace Werner's mysteriously refreshing taste. Absolutely nothing. Don't get caught with your Werner's down. <laughs> Martin, along with Sid Abel, our producer Marvin News, and here at the Boston Gardens, Red Wings led two to one going into the third period with three quick goals by the Bruins, and Boston now up by two, four to two. We have seven minutes, fifteen seconds to play here in the third period. John Rattel playing it over on the left side. Secord went in after it, put it right to the goal mouth. Rutherford knocked it away. It's loose out in front, and it was Willie Huber that covered up on Rattel right in front of the Detroit goal. Milbury goes chasing back into his own zone, being watched by Dale McCourt. Now Milbury is class on the left side, picked up by Rattel. Back it comes to Park. Brad Park, Milbury, Mike Milbury dumping it into the corner. Rattel will be the first man in. Rattel centering fast. Tommy Bergman stops that. Knocked down by Middleton. Here's Middleton handling it back to Rattel right out in front, and again Huber broke it up. 
They play in back of the goal. That puck came loose with Willie Huber after it. Ahead to Netamansky. His pass picked up by Rick Middleton, who played it back into his own zone as that puck was bouncing. Cleared ahead to Jonathan Middleton. Middleton over the line. Rick Middleton trying to work around Huber. And Huber has him tied up. Now LeBratton. Danny LeBratton deep in the Detroit end. Hands it off to Huber. A little more than six minutes to play. Third period. From center ice, a shot wide of the net. Huber's juggled it a bit. Then hands it off to Cashman. Dan Jonathan. Jonathan moving into the Detroit zone. Harper goes in, in behind the net. Jonathan whacked him in along the boards. Errol Thompson intercepted out in front. The wings sent three men out. San Leroy digging down the left side. And he went in ahead of Thompson, who just didn't throw the pass. So the play will come back out over the Boston line. There's still time. If the wings would move in deep, they, they may as well throw caution to the wind now, uh, picking up their wings because Boston move out of their zone isn't going to do any good. They've got to move the play into Boston's zone, move their defensemen up to the point and see if they can put some pressure on, make Boston make mistakes deep in their zone. Now Harper at his own blue line with Greg Jolly. Jolly hands it back to Harper. Harper checked by Foster, so it'll be Jolly going back after it. Greg Jolly in behind the Detroit goal. Lost the puck there, picks it up again, sends it off to Errol Thompson ahead to LeBlanc. J.P. LeBlanc, his pass didn't get through, went off the skate of Smith. Thompson has it back out of center ice. He left it right there, got it again, and scooped it back into the Boston zone with Smith in after it. Left wing pass for Marcotte, came to the line, held in by San Leroy. Off to Errol Thompson, he's turned around. LeBlanc tried to hold it in, but Redmond got it out to center ice. Now J.P. drops it off for Earl Thompson. Knocked away, though, and here's Foster. Right, Foster shooting it in behind the Detroit goal. Rutherford out of the net. Cleared it away from Marcotte. It goes back of the goal again, and Jolly's in after it. And the Wings, who came on in the second period, have not looked all that sharp here in the third, and the Bruins have picked up three goals and lead it 4-2, to two, and the icing call is against Detroit. Well, I do believe that the Bruins haven't given the Wings a chance to look sharp. Hey, fans, you stop in at any Parts Plus Auto Store and fill out a coupon for a Fan Appreciation Award of two box seats at the March 31st Red Wings and Los Angeles hockey game. On each televised game, Parts Plus will present this Fan Appreciation Award during the Parts Plus post-game show. Face off to the left of the Detroit goal. Bouncing in along the boards. Dope stopped it at the line. It's sent off to the side of the net. Rutherford actually came out, kicked it away from O'Reilly. Marcotte and Larson go into the corner together. In behind the goal is Bob Miller. Pass picked off by Bolduck. Three of the wings move down. Three speedsters, Hogabaum and Bolduck over the line with Woods. That's Paul Woods going to the corner away from Bob Miller. In behind the net, Milbury hauled him down. And O'Reilly will bounce it out to the line, but not out. Perry Miller held it in, being checked by Miller. That's Bob Miller. And O'Reilly heads back. He was stopped by Bolduck. Danny Bolduck holds it at the blue line. And they whistle the play down. The faceoff stays at the Detroit line. And now 3.53 to go. And we'll be back after we pause for this. Rough terrain ahead. Last year, we never could have made it. We had a conventional two-wheel drive wagon. Now we've got a four-wheel drive Jeep Cherokee, and anything's possible. The road's pretty squishy up ahead. This would have bogged down our two-wheel drive wagon. But my Cherokee's equipped with Jeep's quadrant track, proving the automatic four-wheel drive with the best traction. Hey, Dad, can we make it up there? Billy, our Cherokee can go anywhere. Yeah. Maybe your next wagon should be a Jeep Cherokee. We wrote the book on four-wheel drive. Face off will be right at the Detroit blue line. Billy Hogabaum in against Bolduck. Hogabaum won the draw. That's Perry Miller. Ahead to Hogabaum on the left side. Woods was stopped by Middleton. Now Middleton's pass broken up by, uh, rather by Miller, and the uh, came right back into the Detroit end offside. Michigan State Spartans at halftime 50, and Pennsylvania 17. It certainly appears as though Michigan State will be on the finals against the club. Either Indiana. It'll, it'll have to be a great comeback by Penn if they're not, I'll tell you. Here's a long pass off Rick Middleton. He turns around, starts with Tell at center A. 
Now Dick Redman, only three and a half minutes to go in the game, and it's been Boston here in the third period with three goals. Paul Woods. Woods turned around by Middleton, sends it out center ice. Hogabaum left it there, but Miller couldn't get to it. It ended up in the crowd. Face off will stay right at the center ice zone. The Red Wings and Toronto Maple Leafs at Olympia tomorrow afternoon will be with you on WJR Radio 10 minutes before 4 o'clock. Matter of fact, we'll have a lot of radio between now and then. Uh, Tuesday night out of Vancouver, Wednesday night out of Los Angeles with 10 minutes to 11 o'clock broadcast time for both of those. Los Angeles will be in Detroit's Olympia Stadium the last day of the month, the 31st, a week from today. Minnesota will be at Detroit the next day on Sunday. And our next telecast will be April the 4th at Montreal, the game against the Canadians. Buck rolling to Cheevers, who cleared it away, and now Brad Park. His pass went between the skates of Foster back into the Detroit zone. Greg Jolly has it. Jolly off to Willie Huber, who bounces it out to center ice. Mike Milbury shoots it right back in. Behind his own goal is Jolly. Now Greg Jolly over on the left side to Danny LeBratton. A pass at center ice. Here's Netamansky. One man back. That's Milbury. And Cheever's got just a piece of that shot just under the crossbar with a gloved hand. And it ended up in the crowd. Uh, maybe he didn't get it. They're bringing the face off out over the blue line. I think he got a little piece of it. He's sure been, he uh, did. It was sure right did. He's, uh, he is complained hurt, I'll say that. So my question to you is then, why did they bring it out over the line? I don't understand why. Uh, they thought possibly it went off the post, but it uh, certainly went off the goaltender. Bob Miller over getting a new stick. The Bellamy family is shocked to learn that their daughter Elizabeth is pregnant, especially considering her husband's indifference and upstairs, downstairs. That's tonight at 10 o'clock on TV 50. Play went back to the Boston line. That's Rick Smith clearing it in behind the Detroit goal. Jim Rutherford shot it into the corner. Willie Huber goes after it. His pass went beyond Netamansky. Rick Smith took the shot and Rutherford with three players right on his doorstep, reached up and grabbed that. Now we have two minutes and 24 seconds remaining. Third period and four to two, Boston. There's a case, Bruce, where the Boston just keep moving deep into Detroit zone. They send someone out in front of Rutherford, and when they do take their shots from the point, it's, uh, it's always through a screen, and Jimmy had to be very sharp to make a save on the last one. Reed Larson. Larson's pass. Knocked down out in front, picked it up again, dumped it out center ice for Danny LeBratton, out of Netamansky. He got it to the line, but Rick Smith stopped that. Bob Miller. Miller stopped by Reed Larson, covering up with Smith again. A little more than two minutes to go. Here's LeBratton at his own blue line with Perry Miller. Miller's pass deflected out center ice. That's Marcotte. It came loose to Miller. Bob Miller checked by Perry Miller, and then he just knocked Perry Miller down. Here's Bob Miller going in behind the net, sending it back to Gary Dope. Over on the left side, Rick Smith with a shot, knocked down in front, and Netamansky has it. Now Netamansky and McCourt, Miller's way up front, and Miller was shoved in by Gary Dope, 10 feet offside. There's going to be an interference call. They're going to send Dope off. And the Wings, with a minute 40 remaining, are going to have a power play opportunity. And this is their only opportunity now, Bruce, to get back in it if they could score a quick goal. Then possibly uh, get back to four to three. I don't know what Perry Miller was doing that far ahead of the play. He was by far the uh, farthest player up, but he just got pushed in by Doak into the zone before the play could come in. Doak got the interference penalty. If the Wings could score a quick goal here and then get a chance to pull Jimmy Rutherford, uh, there's always that possibility. So it's an interference call to Gary Doak at 18 minutes and 20 seconds. Face-off will be out over the Boston line. Dale McCourt, Netamansky, and LeBratton up front with Miller and Larson. At the point, Middleton sent it back to the Detroit zone, and Miller comes back after it. Now that's Reed Larson. It got tangled up in the skates of Netamansky, and he lost it to Marcotte, so Miller takes over again. Harry Miller is fast too far for LeBratton. LeBratton sent off balance by Brad Park. Buck sent to the line, stopped there by Larson, and it went off Netamansky. Now that's Mike Milbury in behind his own goal. Played it out on the right side, Middleton took a whack at it, Perry Miller stopped him. Middleton got it again, still they battle along the board. Here's LeBratton setting up, Netamansky hit the crossbar, drove it off the crossbar. 
Another pass. Zetamansky's knocked down out in front by Marcotte. And coming right back down the ice, Middleton and Marcotte. Middleton cutting in front. He scores! Using Marcotte as a decoy, a short-handed goal for the Bruins. Well, Detroit had their good chance. Zetamansky put it off the post. Here's the place. Middleton makes this look awful easy. Jimmy Rutherford goes down, possibly a little too soon. He was anticipating the play, but Middleton uh, just threw it up on his backhand. Perry Miller come back as far as he could. He partially hooked him. Jimmy went down, and he put just between Jimmy and, and the short post up high in the net. So the 38th goal of the season for Rick Middleton scored at 19.07. And the wings came within an eyelash of getting the quick goal because Nedimansky rung it off the post that would have uh, given them an opportunity to probably pull Jimmy Rutherford. And again, it was questionable because he was hooked as he went in after his own rebound. And that's what sent Middleton down the ice. And this time, the Bruins clear it back into the Detroit zone. Marcotte draws the assist. Middleton gets his 38th shorthanded goal at 19.07 to make it 5-2 Boston. So the Bruins have scored four times here in the third period. Andre Saint Laurent into the Boston zone. Wings still have the extra man, but the Bruins' Brad Park will shoot it down the ice. 35 seconds remaining in the hockey game. Jimmy Rutherford. Off to Willie Huber. Huber checked by Jonathan, pulls away from him. Now Huber with time running out, just a couple of seconds, bounces a shot wide of the Boston goal. And the Bruins come out over the board to congratulate Terry Cheevers as Boston had to come from behind to win it. The end of the game, a final score. Boston Bruins 5, Detroit 2 will return to the Boston Gardens in just a moment. I'm accustomed to riding around in Cadillacs. So why am I in this AMC Pacer wagon instead of a Cadillac? Well, this Pacer is not only quite luxurious and handles so easily, but it also has an astounding amount of room. Did you know that the AMC Pacer is just about as wide as a Cadillac? So it feels like a big car, even though it isn't. And I feel like I'm in a big car, even though I'm not. AMC Pacer feels like a big car, but it isn't. See your local TV book for a free pizza coupon. Yeah, the banks are all alike. They say they want to help, but where are they when you need them? When I needed help, they told me that I didn't have enough of my money to get any of their money. Oh, you guys have been banking with the wrong banks. The Bank of the Commonwealth, they helped me send my kid through college. Braces for my daughter's teeth. My wife's car. In fact, I get so much help from my bank, my family thinks I'm made of money. <laughs> Here, let's see you make this into money. Trying hardest to help. That's the Bank of the Commonwealth. Just like my family. Excitement, adventure, and out-of-this-world drama with Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, and the rest of the crew of the Enterprise on Star Trek. Jim Kirk could be in real trouble. Will it work or not? Mr. Spock goes mad on Star Trek, today at 5 on TV50. So after two very close-checking periods of hockey, the Bruins just took the play away from Detroit in the third period, outshot the Wings 15-4, and four, got a tying goal from Al Secord at 323, then a go-ahead goal by Don Marcotte uh, just exactly two minutes later at 523. Dwight Foster pretty well wrapped it up. Errol Thompson just coming out of the penalty box when Foster scored from Cashman and Park. Then, of course, a shorthanded goal by Middleton at 1907. Put the icing on the cake and the shots again in the third period, 15 and 4 for Boston, who outshot the Wings overall, 27 and 15. That's it, the final score here at the Boston Gardens. The Bruins 5, the Red Wings 2. We invite you to join us 
On uh, Tuesday, the rather Wednesday, the fourth day of April, with the game of the Montreal Canadiens from the Forum in Montreal, telecast time, 8 o'clock. Till then, this is Bruce Martin along with Sid Abel saying stay tuned now, won't you, for our post-game show. Because we fly people who move the world, and people who watch the world, people who make the world work, and people who make the world smile, we've got a good idea what the world wants from an airline. So we have our full service economy class, offering every Pan Am passenger complete service no matter how inexpensive their ticket. We have Clipper class, giving full fare passengers even more service, including free drinks and hors d'oeuvres, plus an empty seat beside them whenever possible. And in first class aboard our 747 SPs, we're introducing a luxurious new table for two dining and unique reclining sleeperette seats, the most comfortable chairs in the air. Now we've got three great ways to fly the world. The post-game show is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Coke adds life to Red Wing Hockey. And by Parts Plus, automotive name brands you can trust. Give me a smile with everything on it. And I'll pass it on. So give me a Coke when you smile and I promise to pass it along. I'm gonna pass it along. The world needs a break when it's tired and thirsty. Coke and it's smile is how it should be. Coke and life. Coke and soda. Muriel Henderson of Plymouth, Michigan, went into the Novi Auto Parts store and filled out the Parts Plus coupon and is our winner of the Parts Plus certificate and will be heading into a hockey game at Olympia Stadium before the season is over, courtesy of Parts Plus. Well, Sid, uh, at the end of two periods of play, the Red Wings led it 2-1. to one. I said something to the effect that if the Wings could uh, hang on, uh, this Boston club didn't look to me like they would be Stanley Cup contenders. But just that dogness that they have, uh, the play in the corner just sort of pulled them right out in front of this hockey game, and they wanted going away. Well, for the first time in a month or so, the third period spelled things bad for the Wings. They just let Boston come in and do too much forechecking. They took the play away from the Wings. really didn't muster any strength going toward the Boston zone at all. So the Red Wings' uh, seven-game unbeaten string comes to an end with a 5-2 to two loss here to the Boston Bruins this afternoon. But... With uh, five wins and one tie, uh, or rather two ties and just one loss in the last eight, that's not all bad. The Wings getting set now to take on Toronto Maple Leafs. That'll be at Olympia Stadium tomorrow afternoon. We'll be with you on radio with that if you can't make it firsthand to Olympia. And we'll be back with Sid's selection as the Red Wings star of this hockey game in just a moment. of quality parts, competitively priced, plus the kind of service you can count on. Why do you buy from Parts Plus? Well, there when I want them with the parts I need. Quality. With Parts Plus, I know I'm getting the best. We've got a wide selection of hard to find parts. We get the answers that help us do it right. Look for auto stores displaying this sign. Parts Plus, for automotive name brands you trust. Well, Sid, uh, the Detroit Red Wings when they lose by three. Again, your task becomes a little more difficult when it comes to picking a Red Wing star of this hockey game, but let's hear your choice. Well, it is a little difficult when Boston would forecheck the way they did. Uh, it's hard to, to get anything yeah. going, but I thought there was one player that skated well. He's one of the smallest players in the hockey club, the Red Wing Hockey Club. He assisted on both the first, the, the first two goals, or the only the two only goals. Two He's a local boy right from this area, played world hockey with New England, uh, played us uh, three years of college hockey with uh, Harvard, Dan Bolduck. I thought Bolduck played well all day long. He went up and down his wing, and the fact that he is small and Boston's so rough, 
He got knocked off the puck several times, but he kept fighting, and because of his speed, looks effectively. So Danny Bolduck was a very popular young hockey player uh, here in the Boston area because of his games with Harvard. Is uh, Sid Abel's Red Wing star of this hockey game, so Dan receives an ice chest full of Coke from the Coca-Cola Bottling Company. So the Wings will be flying home this afternoon, arriving in Detroit uh, early this evening and getting set for tomorrow afternoon's game against the Toronto Maple Leafs with 4 o'clock game time tomorrow. So that takes care of this one. Bruce Martin along with Sid Abel from the Boston Garden saying good evening.